So these other ones, it's kind of the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, unless it's the other one by the park, the other ones running. So this one by the frost, well, it's, we can get that one up and over because there's already storm sewer there to, to make it all work. And then that leads right into frost. So there's like a dirt kind of path that leads right to the park. So that one works. Yeah. We have two that are raised, and the other ones are just off because they just don't work quite the drainage. But we can definitely set them up for this bus. Maybe that's just something. So you think the bus right. was? Excuse me. So I'm in that recording now. Am I started? Okay. Yeah. You don't have to record yet. Well, you know, it's set up to automatic. Okay. I need to make sure I can open my files. It, it's, uh, I got it here. Go to Monona. Go to Winnipeg. Go to two, two. This is how many meetings we had on Winnipeg. Go to the top, the second one. Second one. Just open up the drawings. So down, up, down, back, back. Just to the drawings. Further down, further down, it's a PDF. I'm assuming you have PDF link though or something. Because then I can share that. Go back to this little, okay. this little guy. This little guy. This little blue guy. Yeah. But once you get it going, I, I'll run that. You know, Dan, if you want to. You know, so that TV would be hooked up as well, so yeah. Sorry, I show up as T430 instead of by my name. I, I don't know why, but. Yeah. Hold on, Kathy. We can't quite hear you. That's Kathy. How about now, Kathy? Can somebody talk so we can test the sound? Can you hear me? Thanks. Okay. Try right now. Kathy, can you? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we, we can hear you. Can hear you. Can you hear us? Yep. Okay.
Okay, I'm about to turn my camera on everyone. Okay. Oops, <laughs> I'm not on mute. Dear, oh dear. Whew. I am going to go ahead and call to order the City of Monona Public Works Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 2nd. You've noted the role ban. Yes. Um, I would like to welcome Dave Boyer, our new member. Uh, thanks for joining us virtually. Um, welcome. And uh, moving on, um, item number three is the approval of the minutes December uh, from December 1st. I'll move approval. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion about the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes from December 1st, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Moving on, um, we have the appearances section. If anyone would like to speak um, who's not in the room here, if you would like to raise your hand, I will call on folks to speak. Hi, Hi. Um, not raising her. She's raising her hand here, right? So Christy wants to speak. Looks like we have one of the questions that will actually see the Um, Alder Goforth, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you tonight and for your volunteer service to our community. Um, I'd like to express my support for the Vibrant Hydrants Initiative proposed by Madison Public Art Project. Um, we know that the arts bring us joy, they help us express our values, and they can build bridges between cultures. Um, they're a fundamental component of a healthy community. And public art projects are an opportunity to improve the health and well being of viewers. Um, and as an artist myself, they're also a means of expression to help people heal, both for the creator and the viewer. Uh, as we sit here in the midst of a global pandemic, we definitely need more of those opportunities right now. Um, I remember when MGE started their utility box murals project. And at first, the maintenance crews were opposed to it and, it, and they struggled with it because it was change and change can be hard. Um, but by working together and supporting the field crew, the maintenance crews adapted and the public support was great. And that program has become much more widespread. Um, it's also been a creative way to mitigate uh, tagging and illegal gra graffiti. We also have an opportunity um, to uh, collaborate with our fire department with this exciting initiative and honor them for their service on 9-11, a day where many communities honor and acknowledge their fire departments and public safety professionals. Um, there's also the opportunity to support underrepresented artists in our community with this unique collaboration with our fire department. So I hope you'll see the value in a program like this and um, see that it can bring a lot to our community. And I'm asking for your support this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alba Gopher. Any further appearances? Hearing none, seeing none. Oh, I will uh, close the appearance section for this evening. We have no unfinished business this evening. Um, we'll go to item six, new business. Discussion and consideration of a request to allow public art on city fire hydrants. Um, put forth by Harry Smithell and Elder Goldforth. Um, Jillian, I'm sorry, I'm going to kind of mispronounce your name. And yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. If you would um, like to go ahead, Jillian, and do a little presentation, and then we'll have discussion and ask questions. Sure. Is there a way that I can share my screen? Yes. We'll give you access to you. Um, I'm not always good at that. Yeah. That's it. Right here, right? Yeah, the multiple participants. Yeah, I think you should have it now. Try. Okay. Yeah. Try the share button. Yeah. Hey, if you got it. All right. 
So can everybody see that? Yes. Great, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Jillian. I'm the president of the Madison Public Art Project. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. And I was born in Madison, so I certainly understand what a special place uh, Monona is. In the warmer months, you can find me at the breakwater enjoying the view there, which is just spectacular. So I'm excited to be here tonight to go through the Vibrant Hydrant proposal together, which I believe is a really exciting program for the city of Monona. I'll hope you had a chance to review some of the materials that I submitted, including the project narrative budget and uh, RFP artist draft. So I would like to take questions at the end. Uh, we'll have some Q&A time. A big thank you to Fire Chief McMullen and to Alder Goforth for your words of support. And I hope you had a chance to read the wonderful letters that they wrote as well. Um, because we are on a tight timeline to begin fundraising for this project, it would be great if we could vote on this tonight in order to get up and running. So I just wanted to take a brief minute and um, talk about some of our most recent projects. This was Flamingo Swirls Mural. It was installed 2020 on East Johnson. So if any of you were driving to the airport, you may have seen it on the right side there. And the inspiration for this mural was based off an art prank from 1979. So I think that it really speaks to placemaking and has become an uh, important fixture in the Madison community in a very short time. The next project that we did was last year, we commissioned Molly Stentz, a local uh, flower farmer an artist to create, we partnered with the Madison Public Library, the Madison Flower Flash. And this was a really wonderful weekend that the library just opened their services. So people were just starting to emerge from the COVID-19 stay at home orders. And again, I think that the flowers as a source material, as a source material really had the power to evoke um, a myriad of emotions and connect the human experience in a difficult time during COVID. It also looked absolutely stunning at night when it was all illuminated. We just announced two weeks ago, our latest project, Canopy Understories. We'll be unveiling four sculptures, which will be on view for the next year at the UW Arboretum. Um, two local artists are fabricating, looking at plant species native to the Arboretum, in particular the state tree, which is the sugar maple. So I hope you all have a chance to visit. We're thrilled to be partnering with the UW Arboretum on this. Of course, they're known for their research and educational excellence. We're here tonight to discuss Vibrant Hydrant, an exciting new public art project. I'm here with the full support of Fire Chief McMullen and Alder Goforth. So I just wanted to include a few images of what we're actually talking about. Other cities have successfully implemented this program. The good news is that according to Fire Chief McMullen, there's no color coding or hydrant restrictions that we need. The only thing he asked of us that we uh, move forward, making sure that the hydrants don't blend into their surroundings. So we will be ensuring that the hydrants are easy to see. Of course, if you have a chance to read the RFP, the artist call does call for color, which I think is a huge um, important tone of the whole project as we celebrate diversity and provide this sort of uplifting moment as people pass by. Of course, we want these to be colorful hydrants. So the selection committee will be made aware of this and also a member of the fire department will be sitting on that selection committee as well. The goal of these colorful painted hydrants is to uplift the spirits of those who pass by, to offer a collective remembrance of September 11th, commemorating those we lost, and take steps towards a more inclusive and peaceful world, inclusive and peaceful world. So we're thinking that the priming and painting of this will begin on um, September 5th, which is a Monday, that gives us time to work with the artists who may have family and work commitments 
it's lighter out longer in the fall, so we'll have more time into the evening. That gives us a rain uh, weather date option as well. We're planning to fundraise to commission 10 artists. So we're discussing tonight the first round of this program. I wrote it as a scalable proposal, but we're looking at uh, this initial round as an opportunity for a diverse group of artists to paint a, a, a unique, unique canvas. I've never uh, seen this done before in the area. So that'll be very exciting to the artists. We're looking to give priority to artists who have been historically underrepresented in the art world. So now we're talking about artists, uh, BIPOC artists, female or female identifying, LGBTQIA+, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual artists, as well as disabled and or veteran artists. And we're planning to work with the Monona Eastside Business Alliance as a resource to help spread the word to local businesses. So homeowners can participate by having a hydrant in front of their home, as well as local businesses that may have a hydrant nearby to their place. We feel that this is an exciting initiative and that the creative spirit of Monona will certainly be enhanced through the artistic expressions on view across the city. It certainly aligns with the Madison Public Art uh, Project mission of connecting local artists and their local communities. And we feel that this will be an inclusive um, project that supports a further resilient city environment. So what are the specific project logistics? I'm planning to oversee the entire program along with Fire Chief McMullen and Alder Goforth. Hopefully you had a chance to read the RFP which details some of the specific artist details. Um, the artist honoraria is in the budget for 3000. So it's important to note that those are monies that the artist keeps. The project materials are going to be uh, fundraised separately, so that's also detailed in the budget. And if any of you would like to sit on the advisory panel, we would certainly love to have you. I know Alder Goforth and I have spoke too about inviting a member of the uh, Monona, Monona Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee who may be interested to sit on that committee. So that will be um, the panel reviewing all of the submissions that come in, vetting them, making sure is this appropriate for the public realm, does this um, design align with what we're looking to do, and then those are the winning 10 designs that will be approved and painted. We feel that the Vibrant Hydrant program can support a greater understanding in local arts and culture while beautifying and connecting neighborhoods. And also, hopefully, it will bring new guests into the city to view these hydrants. It will offer a collective rem remembrance to the events of 9-11, as well as providing an opportunity for diverse artists to create a very cool project uh, in the public realm and enhancing neighborhood pride. The hydrants will be free, so we're looking at an open for everyone, family-friendly activity, to do within the community that's outdoors, it's fun, it's COVID-19 safe. I certainly think that this project speaks to placemaking. And if you look at the definition of the endowment for the arts defining that, um, this certainly aligns with this project. They say creative placemaking integrates arts, culture and design activities into efforts that strengthen communities. It requires partnership across sectors, deeply engages the community, involves artists, designers, and culture bearers. It helps to advance the local economic, physical, and or social change, ultimately laying the groundwork for systems change. We have some really exciting programming ideas as well. We're looking to do um, what Fire Chief McMullen is calling, which I love, a parade of hydrants. Uh, that will be part of the ceremony that would take place Sunday uh, during the hydrant unveiling on 9-11, where we're going to join in a collective remembrance for those we lost. And this is looking to take steps towards a more inclusive and peaceful world. So I hope that you can all come. 
the ceremony at the firehouse is going to be really special. I think we'll let the artists um, talk for a minute too about, you know, what was their design inspiration and why they wanted to be part of this project in the first place as people step up and, and wish to share. So I feel that with this program, we are laying that groundwork for change. Then after that, we're looking to do some um, walking tours or bike tours as the weather's still nice in October and November. And then even through 2023, I think there are some great placemaking opportunities. If you look at Black History Month, which we're um, in now, as February's here, March, we're looking at Women's History Month, May with mental health awareness, and June during Pride Month would specifically be great opportunities for that. A little bit on the maintenance process. We're planning to keep a paint library of all the materials used. And I believe Fire Chief McMullen is looking into a venue that would be local where we would be able to store the paint and equipment. Of course, if any touch-ups are needed, we'll be directly coordinating that with the artists, with my board members and team of volunteers that we have ready to assist for paint days. The process would be preparing the existing hydrant by gently scuffing the surface with a uh, wire brush or sandpaper, using a rust inhibited primer for exterior metal. So that's what we would be using to prime. Then we would be painting with an exterior epoxy direct to metal paint, DTM. And then we would be covering with a top coat. Uh, it's essentially a clear polyurethane to protect the completed design. That's to protect it from UV rays, sun, water, snow, et cetera. So it is important to note that there's no maintenance required from the city on this project. Uh, we do have board members and volunteers on hand that will have watchful eyes on this as well. The budget that I created is both for the short-term and the long-term care of the hydrants, including a maintenance contingency. When the program concludes, the hydrants will be restored 100% back to their initial condition at no cost to the city. The maintenance contingency is in case somebody decides to go ahead and paint a hydrant on their own. That's not part of those 10 approved designs. I budgeted uh, five hydrants at 350, so we're looking at 1,750 there, as well as an end of program fee uh, restoration to restore the hydrants back to the red when someday, hopefully down the line, the program ends at 3,500. That would be with a city approved contractor. And then we do have project signage in the budget as well, around 300. So I do hope that this would help to put any potential objections at ease. I seriously doubt the general public is gonna attempt to paint these on their own. Uh, Alder Goforth mentioned the utility box project earlier tonight, which is a great program to look at. And I have not heard of anyone attempting to paint the unpainted utility boxes as well. So I hope that having this contingency in the budget will make for an easy approval tonight. Here's a picture of what we're looking at for the sign. Um, having this signage next to the hydrant, we feel um, with the artist name and website that we're gonna be printing locally um, in Monona, supporting a local business, will ensure that people understand this is part of a curated organized art project. So the sign dimensions are 11 by six by 32, which gives us a little bit room to um, stick it in the ground so it's not gonna get buried in a pile of snow or leaves. We feel that it's a great complement to the hydrant. The signs are made out of a coroplast material, which is a corrugated plastic, tough, um, weather resistant, printed with UV ink, so definitely suited for exterior conditions. We feel that this will be an effective visual communication tool to convey once again, that this is an organized project. In conclusion, um, I do look forward to working together to bring this innovative and exciting program to fruition. Uh, we believe the art in this program has the power to spark and elevate the human spirit, certainly. And I just want to call on all of you to take this journey with us. I think at the end of the day tonight, we just need to keep in mind that we're saying yes to 10 hydrants. Um, it costs the city nothing. 
At the end of the program, the hydrants will be restored back to their original condition. And I think we owe it to ourselves to be bold and fearless. I think we should risk a little bit and trust and just, we should give it a go. I think it's an opportunity to do something really special and to actually take a step forward towards a more inclusive and peaceful world. And I didn't just write it, I do actually believe it. I draft reports each month on equity and diversity and inclusion. And I think that this is a really special project to do it in a fun and exciting and tangible way that's gonna offer some really exciting community results. So with your support, I do believe we can shape tomorrow's world for the better. And I think we owe it to ourselves and to our neighbors and to our grandkids and kids to try this. So that's why I'm here tonight. So I'm asking for your support because I can't do it without you. And I thank you so much for your time. Yes. I, I don't have a question as much as I have a couple of comments. Um, my daughter's an art curator, so I'm a strong proponent of oh, public art projects because she does them um, from San Francisco. Um, cool. I'd like, I'd like the design that you showed us because one of my concerns is one of the audiences that are will see these are kids because this is kid size art. Right, absolutely. And so it will it will appeal to them. And so I would hope that um, we would keep that in mind. Maybe make opportunities for kids when you're talking about doing programs for them. And also, if we could consider okay. when you talked about inclusion and equity, whether or not there's an opportunity for someone to do something that has a Native American theme or an African American theme to them. Um, absolutely. I think I'm hoping for great. both. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um, and your point about the the kids and the children um, is is spot on too. You know, it's like right at their perfect height. So that's perfect. So that that that's my comment. And I and I think it's a it, it's a wonderful. Um, Public art is, is um, there's not enough of it around um, because usually art is the last thing to get money for anything. So um, I think this is a wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. We do too, we're excited. Uh, thank you for putting this together and I, I'm enthusiastically in support of this. I guess the only thing that I'm disappointed to hear is that they'll be restored to their normal condition when it's done. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why these wouldn't be allowed to uh, age gracefully in the community, but maybe that's the way it's done. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I can't imagine not allowing the examples you have up there on the screen right now to, you know, to hang around for a while. So. Uh, other and than can, wanting to talk about that, I'm, I fully support it. Yeah, and we could certainly look at that um, as a possibility as well. I mean, that would be great. Awesome. Tim? Uh, a couple of questions, I guess. Uh, you're, you're doing this in Madison as well? So we're not doing it in Madison. The proposal oh, okay. is strictly for Monona. I see. And why did you choose 10? You know, I think that 10 is a good number if we look at um, the budget and if we look at the scope of work and we look at this new being a completely new venture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, like I said earlier, I wrote it as a scalable proposal and that doesn't mean that we wouldn't do, you know, 15 or 20 next time. But I think to get our footing in a new space and mm -hmm. to see how it goes, I just, I was speaking with, um, Fire Chief McMullen and Elder go forth, and we just thought that, that would be a good number, especially if we're needing to fundraise for that contingency. Um, you know, that's a budget consideration as well. Sure. And and are you thinking Monona Drive? Are you thinking neighborhoods? Are you thinking yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, in the city parks? Um, uh, what what would be your preference? With can we give some? I mean, we want to leave that up to your design for the most of part, course. but if we could give some direction towards uh, visibility, um, um, you know, we could put one by the breakwater just for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I did. Um, in that regard? 
yeah thank you thank you for all the questions and for that i think i wrote somewhere in the um artist rfp that we were going to start on the main drag so we were going to look to Monona Drive as it being, of course, a high traffic and high visibility area, which would be exciting and get the most eyes, as, as well as um, East and West Broadway, West Broadway in particular. And then from there, homeowners that were interested to participate, looking at those residential pockets as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, along with that, too, um, since you're not doing it in Madison, is there, and I fully am supportive of the whole diversity thing that you're talking about here. But is there a way to incorporate more Monona artists into this? I'm hoping so. Okay. I'm hoping so. I'm going to do a call for artists. And, um, you know, again, it, it just, it's like what comes back to us. So I think that artists that live in the community are certainly most interested to um, participate from what we've seen previously, but I, I don't want to exclude a Madison artist if, if mm -hmm. we think that you know their design is really relevant and um, could be very inspiring. So I think these are going to be questions that will certainly come up during the um, panel that we put together for the selection committee and it'll be exciting to see what comes in and where they're located and how they answer the question of why they wanted to participate. Maybe that's where Mesba can be of more help is to make, make the local artists a little bit more aware of it as well. And, and one last question, one last question as well, is that at least by my math, nearly twelve or thirteen hundred dollars, maybe fourteen hundred dollars uh, per hydrant is cleaning them, scraping them, restoring them. And I hope you don't restore them myself. Uh, but uh, can, is it possible since they are only in Monona? Can that be, can we specify that that goes to a Monona contractor, a Monona business? I don't see why not. Yeah, okay. I don't see why not. That would I mean, be great. I, I mean, as long as, their, the yeah, as long as their bid is reasonable, we're a nonprofit, so um, every oh, dollar sure. does count, but um, we'll okay. certainly look at that and I think that would be great. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of painters, et cetera, in the Monona area. Uh, yeah. a lot of contractors and I, I'm sure they would be interested in you could come up with a very competitive bid. Okay. okay thank you. Yeah, thank you. Kathy, uh, uh, a question and then a, a comment. Um, can you tell us if, for example, my neighborhood association, I'm going to ask them if they would sponsor one. What's the cost if, for sponsoring a, a, a painted um, fire hydrant? We're looking at a cost of around $500 to sponsor a hydrant, which we feel is a very friendly fee, um, approachable. That means you're supporting an artist and um, helping to support some of the materials as well. So what if you got, so my a follow up to that, what if you got more, more money than, than uh, to do more than uh, 10 hydrants? Would you do more if you got more money? Yeah, we could certainly look at that as well. Okay, that and my my final comment is that you know that I, I agree with with Chad and Tim that you know I would hate to see them go away, and I would think um, and Christy might know about this as well that if you tried to partner with MG Twenty One, those which is a charter school or charter oh, okay. high school. And, and they love doing community projects and they love things like this. And so in terms of maintenance or assistance with maintenance, um, they might be someone that you could partner with. Okay, that's a great idea. Enrolling the um, local charter school in, in terms of if they need um, upkeep or maintenance, helping them be involved, I think is a great idea. I think they were involved, you know, there was the, um, there's the, the, the uh, uh, public project of the artwork as you leave town that, that, in, that, um, that honors Harry Whitehorse. And I believe MG21 was involved in that project. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. So, so kind of a follow-up to what Kathy was talking about, uh, to restore each one of these hydrants back to the original red and white. Uh, cost $350 per. Correct. Uh, so that's 
$3,500. That's how good I am with math. Right. <laughs> and uh, so if we were to decide that we want them to stay painted, could we apply that $3,500 to another number of hydrants? We could do that. We could also increase, potentially increase the um, artist fee as well, which oh. I might like to see. So that maybe we would, uh, maybe I, we I would bump that. that well. Maybe we would bump that up to five hundred and look at maybe expanding to fifteen or, or hydrants to see, you know, mm -hmm. what that budget would look like then. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I can, I can see supporting the local artists. Big fan of that. That would be great. Jennifer, are you looking for a motion? Um, I would take a motion and unless we have more discussion that we want to go first. I would I'll move, move approval. Okay. I'll second. All right, I have a motion and second. Do we have further discussion? Uh, but do we have an actual motion just to accept or is that is that what we're after? Kathy, do you want to frame your motion? I was assuming oh, well, you can, can I can I ask the group? Uh, what they think of, of expanding this project if we were to uh, ask that they be not restored. If we were to, instead of doing uh, 10 hydrants for this project, we do, uh, but what, another five? I guess I would be curious about Kathy's motion to city's concerns with not having the option to restore. Uh, if, if, if the uh, if the option, if the city decides they want them restored, I will personally paint them. <laughs> we'll look at that, Tim. Okay. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in the minutes, would you please? I'll make a motion that Tim Carino will personally restore Tim, the Tim, hydrants. And... Tim is as handy as they get. He could build these fire hydrants. Wow. <laughs> Um, I, Tim, I would support um, if, if, and and I think that I think this is sort of, you know, coming out of left field to the, to the, uh, to the project. So I think they haven't thought about this, but but I think what what you're hearing us say is we'd like to keep them as long as we could, and Tim has offered to fund them. So. Um, could we look at expanding using the 30? We have to see how much money we can raise. That's it. We don't have any money right mm -hmm. now. But but do we could we look to expanding them beyond that, depending upon funding available and not reserve money for restoration? Because ultimately, um, Tim would do it when 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 the when the paint has worn out forever. Is that is that well, especially that clear coat? As someone who has painted his building with clear coat because of the graffiti, I know that's tough stuff. So how how do you feel about this? I think that would be great. Personally, I think if we could um, parlay, you know, that if we look at that 3,500 as a potential to increase the artist fee and increase the um, hydrant to uh, 15 instead of 10. Does that work for you, Tim? That works for me. I'd also like to have a preference for a local contractor uh, to, to do the, the prep work and the um, whatever's necessary with that. I, well, I think that would be a, a, a wonderful local project for to support I, I, our business. I, I would term it preference with a preference to providing um, reasonably, you know, a, you can, I don't want to tie their hands to you must. I, I, I understand. So, yeah, but, but, but you see my point. I, I'm just not quite sure how to word that. I think you might- a strong to preference to providing um, work be done by local contractor if um, all things being equal or, uh, Chad, you're a contractor, what's the word we want? Well, I'm a longstanding member of Dane by local. And so I think the spirit of this is that we have someone from the local community. It doesn't necessarily have to be Monona in my view, uh, someone from the county 
would be preferred, but uh, I mean, I can't imagine we're going to be getting competitive bids from someone outside of the county. Uh, so while I while I certainly uh, agree wholeheartedly with the spirit of it, I just I don't know how you would codify that. Um, we. Well, I, I, I guess what 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 I think Jim means and what I'm saying is that all things being equal, um, preference be given to a Monona contractor. And, and, and it really is up to when you're looking at the bids, sometimes things are roughly equal. Um, and, and if they are, and if we don't even know if a Monona contract would apply, so we can't, we can't, we don't want to hold your hands to a Monona contractor, but our preference would be to have Monona or a local contractor. Yeah, I, I think that that's good. And then I just wanted to note one thing in terms of the prep work um, from the calls that I've been making this past week since I sent that in to you guys. I'm, I'm pretty confident that the prep will be able to do on our own. So I don't feel that a contractor will be needed for that initial step because we'll be essentially sort of roughing up the paint that in a gentle way, the paint that's already there in order to apply a direct to metal paint on top of it. So the contractor dialogue that we're discussing now would be down the road. We've had lots of discussions since Kathy's original motion, which was kind of vague. So I'd like if you could, Kathy, to reframe your motion so that we can have something for the record. Yep. How would you like to say it? Are you doing that, Kathy, or am I? Are, are you asking us if we're okay with that? No, I'm asking you to reframe your motion, re restate your motion for the record, because we had a lot of discussion and a lot of add-ons as we were talking okay. to your intent. So if you could restate it for the record, that would be helpful. You expect me to remember <laughs> that, that we move approval of um, 15 hydrants being painted under the project proposal and that they we may make every effort to maintain them for as long as possible in the painted condition. And when um, they need to be restored to their original condition that Tim Carino has volunteered <laughs> to do so. You don't really have to include that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, Beyond that, is there anything, is, is that clear enough and is that enough for everybody? Could I add with that, Kathy, uh, that, that the committee, the, the Public Works Committee has a preference for Monona contractors being involved? Yes, if possible, the preference is for Monona contractors. I would second that motion. I just wanna clarify, you wanted 15 as opposed to 10, Kathy? Well, she said 15. I, I was going to say up to 15. Between 10 and 15? No less than 10 and up to 15? I'm, I'm happy with 15. You want to read that to Kathy? I mean, I, I say up to 15 because, Tim, what if we only have 14 hours of supply? Uh, you, you, you oh, we out. could have one artist do two two hydrants, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so what I have is motion to approve up to 15 hydrant, hydrants and to maintain for a long duration in the painted condition with preference given to Monona contractors when possible uh, if contractors are used. Yeah, and by contractors, I don't necessarily mean artists. No, I agree with that. So, so I, I don't, I, I, I'm not trying to say preference to Monona artists. We want to say maintenance contractors, so that's clear, Kathy? Yes, that would be good. So preference 
it, when possible, be given to Monona contractors? For preparation and uh, maintenance. But that's preference because maybe nobody's interested. So, yeah, exactly. So, you had seconded, but I think Tim had also yeah, seconded. Yeah, that's fine. So, let's we'll go with Tim second. Is that comfortable? And, and I, I seconded right. whatever we just did. Okay. So, I have a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Jillian, one other thing. I, I'm not trying to push myself, but if you were looking for local participation on the committee, I would be happy to, to volunteer. Ooh, wonderful. Okay. And if I could jump in there too, um, uh, I think you'll find my email address on the like the city, what we're doing right now. Uh, okay. I've got, I've got a wall in Madison that I'd like to talk to you about. Okay, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a great city project. That's exciting. Let's let's chat. So, so if you can contact me, or I'll try and contact you one or the other. Okay, will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Thanks. On, we lost track. Uh, okay. um, item B, South Clinical Project 60% design update. Department of the Work Staff and Strand of Circuits. That's us. Well, I, you know, we should have. I'm glad we let the. No. Lose your phone. Did I drop my phone during this? Um, it's hard to follow the cool hydro. Right. <laughs> Come on, you're Okay, so we are here to talk today about uh, South Winnipeg project. I'm going to share the screen here. Um, I should be able to share. Oops, I'll share this. Can you guys see my screen? So on, on the video end, can you guys just see what looks to be just street view? Okay, yeah, I, think, I think I heard Tim say yep. Yeah. So we are starting this project um, down at the south end of Bridge Road. There's actually construction here from the year prior, two years ago. And we're picking it up. And what we're gonna discuss here tonight is the design from the south end all the way up along the east side where the sidewalk is gonna be. Um, and I, and I, I'm gonna walk through the plan. So I'm gonna walk through it kind of sheet by sheet tonight. And there's a few questions that Zach and myself have been preparing that we may have for you along the way. Um, some of it has to do with crosswalks, some of it has to do with kind of the speed humps, and then just what our thought was as we walked across this. Tim. Yeah, um, before we get into that, could you take a, a second, maybe you and Dan and, and such, and because uh, I, and there's not a lot of people who are zooming in with us tonight, but there may be people checking in later and especially some people who maybe not be happy with what we do. And I'm wondering if you could take a second and just go through, I mean, this is the 60% meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Could you, could you take a second and just go through what the process is from here till we give the final approval? Okay. That is a, that is a good question, Dan. You might have to help me on that a little bit. What's your next steps on after this meeting? Right. So after this meeting, uh, Josh is going to provide an update on the 60% design. Any tweaks coming out of here? Um, this will be at City Council next Monday evening to give the same update to City Council members. As far as the design, to my knowledge, um, it is set based off what the Public Works Committee and City Council approved back in December. So there's going to be no major changes coming out of, of tonight or Monday night um, unless City Council uh, puts it on a future agenda to change the design once again. Um, as far as bid advertisement, I believe we are doing a March 24th bid opening. Um, so we're, we're on a tight timeline. Um, so we're, we're doing a 60% design tonight, Monday night at council. Any tweaks coming out of these two meetings for Strand to do 
their work to complete final design, and then it's going out to bid. I mean, the goal would be, we're, we're pretty close to being there unless there's some major changes or some conversation in the next two meetings that near the end of the month in February into early March, we're ready to put this on the street for contractors. Right. Um, you know, if we start to delay more, we just would have to push that bid date back uh, as part of it. But we did want to get it out in the competitive bidding season too to try to get some some good prices um, on the, on so the project. Tonight, tonight, tonight is 60%. We have another meeting, which is, I, if I remember correctly, like 90% kind of thing. No, no, this is it. Tonight this is, is tonight. It. Yep. Okay. Okay. Just want to make that clear. Thank you. Yep. Yep. After after basically after Monday night, Strand moves into final design and prepping for bidding. Yep. Okay. So we don't see it again before nope. it goes up. No. Nope. Right. No. Nope. Unless you wanted to talk about after it's awarded, you know, or after the right. bid, after the oh, bids come true. in. That's right. True. Usually you'll come back, you'll see the project, you know, you'll yeah. you'll learn the timeline of construction, you know, who was the contractor, right. what the overall price was. You know, I mean, typically we are making design changes at that point, but if there's a tweak or two that somebody has an idea or something that needs to be incorporated, you could do that. But remember, that's changing the contract to the contract. Right. So we'd like to try to get most of that resolved now. And if for whatever reason, I guess, Tim, if we feel like after this meeting, after this discussion, we're not there yet, then we're going to have to push that bid. We'd have to push it a month, which we're trying to avoid if we can. So, Understood. So there is one more little kick at the cat if we were to do that, but it's only for small changes, aesthetics, et cetera. Yes, yeah. You're saying like after it's bid or right prior to bidding, we could, mm -hmm. we could talk okay. about Okay, understood, thank you. I, I'd like to try to get as much resolved as we can. I think minor tweaks can be, can be done we through can this finish. meeting. Yeah. As far as design elements, that's, that's what you and council decided on in December, but my minor tweaks, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what this meeting and Monday's meeting is for is to make final adjustments. Uh, but as far as design parameters, that's that's yeah. pretty solid. Yeah. So gotcha. Monday's meeting is council. Yep. yep. And so if they make some changes, it doesn't come back to public works. The thing is, it's going to be presented the same way at council as it is here. Okay. Um, if, okay. if there's a design change, it's going to have to come back here. Yeah. yeah. And then it's going to delay the right. bid. Yeah. So, right. yeah, we'll just have right. to delay it. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you guys hear that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah my question is um, when do we plan to start the project? And, and the reason for my question is my concern is that if you have, and I understand you're not supposed to to you know, put stuff in the right of way, but we all maintain the right of way. And if you have a garden or something that you want to move out of there, the decision of, of where the sidewalk was going, what was going on, um, was made after the growing most of the growing season was done, and I fear will be started before the growing season begins. So if you wanted to move a garden or stuff that you had planted in that part, you you might not have time to do that. So, so my question is, when will a project be started? Um, and when is the last chance that you would have to move anything in your front yard? So at least in my initial conversations with Dan, we were thinking this would not take place until after the 4th of July festival. Thank you, okay. So, and, and you know, it should, Barring, you know, that's another thing I want to talk to you tonight about. I, we have several questions, but one of them is going to be traffic control and what we're going to do. And it'd be nice just to let local traffic only on this road. Let them take, let them go at it. And if we start after, after, just after the fourth, it'd be nice to get it done before kind of just as school was starting, you know, knock out the majority of everything that we need to do. But we would want to make sure that we can close the majority of it down. If we're going to say, we well, know we have to keep it open to a lot of traffic going south or north. Um, that will draw that time frame. Yeah, the, the goal would be to sign it like any other road project where yeah. the, the big barricades say local traffic only. Um, because if you keep it open to normal traffic, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow the project way down. Um, we're, we're talking probably a month. Yeah, uh, I would add about a month. Yeah. yeah. So the, the goal, like any other road work, local traffic only, meaning residents who live in that in that yeah. corridor can still get uh, can come and go but the the cut through 
Um, we're going to make every effort to try and minimize that during construction so we can tighten that timeline. So my office uh, up on Fordham Avenue was was involved in a road construction a couple of years ago, and they started with the, the two way traffic, and then very quickly they changed it to one way traffic. Should we even consider that right now? I think uh, right now the plan calls for flagging operation. Um, I, I don't know if we should even entertain a one way. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to put the signs up. They're going to say local traffic only. And yes, you're going to be able to sort of get through it as they're cutting in sidewalk and stuff. But as soon as they start ripping bump outs out yeah. and then start some of their pavement work and milling, it's going to be restricted to, you know, you kind of going through the construction site slowly to get to a driveway or, or your residence and, and kind of weaving around just like they would on any of your other projects. Um, you know, contractors waving you by and making sure that you can get by um, safely around the equipment. So uh, I don't anticipate, I, I would like to sign it and maybe pick a route with public works to sign maybe detour to like tell people instead of going this way, you know, you're going out to Monona Drive and going around or Take Bridge Road up and around basically back to Nichols so you can come back over. Um, you know, we'll have to think that through a little bit, but I'd like to sign it, have the contractor sign it so traffic isn't using it at all except for the people that work there. And any emergency. Emergency you know, and garbage is yeah. still going to be, you know, some of the some of the services still have to get through there. But there's really no, Tim, there's really no underground work, which is nice. There's a little bit of storm, storm sewer modifications, but really it's it's basically all surface work. So it should go fairly yeah, fast really quick and it should move down the corridor fairly quick. So it's not going to yeah. be in one spot, That's you know, nice. long yeah. periods of time. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just like, let's just walk through the plans. Let's walk through sheet by sheet and Zach remind me as we're going through, if we have a question on something and I miss it, don't, don't be scared to yell out at me. So I just wanted to discuss typical sections first, and I'm gonna pull this over so people can see it here. I'm gonna zoom in. So when I say typical sections, it's, it's what we're gonna propose here after what the section's gonna be like. So from Bridge Road all the way up to, all the way up to Owen Road, we're basically just repaving the pavements. So you see this dark, this dark um, bold line there. We're taking off two inches of pavement, we're putting back two inches of pavement. We're gonna have 10 foot drive lanes, and then what could be a six and a half foot bike lane. Now that bike lane is gonna have a two and a half foot buffer. So it's gonna be double striped with some hatching, you know, every 25 feet along there. So that's gonna be six and a half foot of bike space with this buffered zone between it, basically. So that, that bikes can use all of that space. There'll be no parking, no parking on this entire stretch moving forward. And then we're gonna have a sidewalk and that terrace is typically only gonna be five feet, but there's times where we're going around trees, we're avoiding landscaping, so it is gonna vary. We're gonna to try to keep it five with a five foot walk. So five foot green space with a five foot walk. And when I go through the plans, you'll see that where we're kind of jogging all that. As we go north of Owen, so Owen to Maywood. Kathy, you're on mute, Kathy. <laughs> I have a question down there on the section you started. This, how far in from, if you just take where the curb is now, and do you have to, how much, how far will you be going in from the curb? Down like by Bridge Road, like by Bridge Road. You're you're talking about like I'm talking about where you're starting at the south end. Yeah, down there. Ten feet. Accommodate the sidewalk and the the um the frontage part. How how far in from the current curb are you going in? Will we'll typically be ten feet. Okay. Is there a reason you need to do a five foot right away? I mean, a five foot terrace. Um. Is that typical? That's pretty typical. I mean, you can go to it's as narrow as three feet, and everybody's going to complain that the snow keeps getting on the sidewalk. Four used to kind of be, it used to be four and four. A lot of people more like five and five if you can get five and five. So five foot terrace, five foot sidewalk. It just gives you that much more space to put snow, to put leaves, to get your trash cans on. It's just, it's just a little bit bigger. 
um, of, of, of a space. So, and we can talk about that when we look at the sections to see how that impacts. I think Kathy, what you're trying to say is if we can narrow that, that's just less impact to the yards on that side, right? Or that's right. That's what resident. I'm saying. Yeah. So we can we can well, discuss that. I I completely oppose that because the whole point of this is to create a safer road. And once you start making it tighter, you are compromising the safety of the pedestrian. You are making it more difficult to accommodate all the things we said we were going to have trouble accommodating up where, uh, you know, Mike Mullins lives. I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all. That's completely wrongheaded. And I'm sorry, Alder Thomas, but I'm just going to say I disagree with that completely categorically. And I would ask you to retract it because that is that goes against the entire spirit of this project. I, I would You're robbing I would, Peter to pay Paul. That I makes would, no sense. I would ask how shortening the terrace endangers the pedestrians who will be on the sidewalk. The closer you put a pedestrian to the street, when a car has to sway or take evasive action, the closer a pedestrian is to that street, the more likely they're going to come into harm's way. There is absolutely a public safety reason and an engineering reason that I'm sure Josh can inform you on that you want to keep pedestrians as far from the street as is possible. It is common sense. Well, so, when I heard the explanation, it wasn't about public safety. It was about accommodating leaves and trash. Well, one other thing I didn't include, Kathy, and, and I didn't, I didn't add it is if we're going to have crosswalks at certain locations, five feet is nice in order to get 88 too. So the, the narrow, the more narrow it gets, the harder it is to get 88 kind of ramps. So what we have to do is we have to dip the sidewalk down leading into it and then, and then ramp down. So it's, it's an ease of, of getting the 88 too, when you have more space, I would agree with Chad and the fact that if you had 10 feet, it would be better to get the people away from from the road um it's just most most of the time you don't have that much right away in this case we have that much right away right so we have a lot of right away um when you have only 66 feet you tend not to get much more than five or six feet um, of separation there so I, I personally like five that's usually my minimum that we usually try to 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 promote as in as engineers do some people go narrower? Yes, but Kathy, it's typically not because there's landscaping there. It's because there's, let's say the retaining wall or there's you know, some other big thing that we can't move that you make some concessions. Um, but if it's like along the entire corridor and we have the space, let's look at, let's just look at the way it's, let's look at the way some of this is laid out and then we can talk about that a little further. Okay. Because I, I, I do have one further question. What is the terrace on currently on Dean and Nichols? I knew you'd ask hard questions. I don't know that, but I'm going to measure that right now if I can get a measurement on it. Okay. I don't think, I don't think Google gives you our right away lines. No, she's just talking about the terrace though. And actually, Google measures really good for terrace space. I mean, they're pretty good. It measures very accurately, surprisingly. So there you have six feet. So I would wager that you have six feet on nickels and the sidewalk's probably five there the way it looks. Yeah, five foot sidewalk. So you have a six foot terrace on nickels and a five foot sidewalk, at least the section I just measured. Um, let's go up to Dean. Sorry, bear with me. I don't think the terrace is quite as wide up here, but let's just check it. Like it looks a little maybe more narrow on the north side. So let's check the north side. Hear that measurement. That looks like it's about five and a half maybe. Okay. So That's five and a half and probably five again is what I'm guessing up here, the way it looks. Okay. Yeah. You know, it might be it might be somewhere between five and six, Kathy. Um, okay. It's hard to measure that close, but I bet you you got five and five. It looks like you have five and six on 
on Nichols, at least in that section. Okay. That's and you'll good. see that's Thank pretty you. common. I mean, typically also people would tell you you need at least five feet if you want to plant a street tree in it and have good success. Now, again, that's a smaller tree, tree and you may not allow some of that, you know, but if you do, it's nice to have at least five feet. So that's okay. another reason not to have a small terrace um, and probably why they weren't narrow on both Nichols and, and Dean. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to jump to the plants. I can't see my video, but that's why it's right there. So moving from Owen north to Maywood, that, that section gets a little skinnier. So what we lose in this section is we still have 10 foot drive lanes. The whole corridor will have 10 foot drive lanes, but we only have four foot bike lanes. So we don't have that two and a half feet of buffer space. Um, the terrace again, you'll see varies there. And we have a four to five foot sidewalk. There's a four foot sidewalk next to the wall. And we'll talk about that in a second because we have a very important constraint there. And then from Maywood to Schluter, we have 10 foot lanes and five foot bike lanes. An, an extra foot for the bike lanes, which is great there. We're basically just repaving the pavement. We're not doing anything else in that section. I should have mentioned from Owen to Maywood, we are moving this curve. So the east curb will move. And I think it shifts around three feet closer in to narrow that street. What we are proposing is we will not touch the west curb at all. We will not touch the decorative wall at all on the west side. So that space and the curb that's there now stays there, okay? And we can, when we get to that section, we'll talk about that. I'm gonna start south and I'm gonna work my way north. So Bridge Road is to the south here. Whenever you see this hatching, I hatched the plans wherever there was landscaping or vegetated area. Zach did that for me. I think when we were looking at it, you couldn't really see it with just lines. So we just hatched it for information so everybody kind of knew what we were running into. So the sidewalk picks up at Bridge Road um, and it travels, it travels along the east side, five foot terrace, five foot walk. There's a couple trees, so we're just trying to miss the trees. You'll notice there's a dashed line on there. We've taken it a step further. We've run cross sections through this entire thing. The dashed line is where we're hoping to not impact past. So it's we've matched it with the lawn areas. The dashed line is our farthest impact. So they're going to come in and they're going to cut that sidewalk in there. And we're, we're really matching very close to what the yard level is there. So these two trees that you see along this side here, when they take the shot on those trees, the center of that tree is actually the face of that tree. They shoot the face of it next to the road. So that's actually the center. The center dot is actually the face of the tree. So we're trying to stay at least two to three feet away from that face. We get it close in a few areas, but we're also trying to match the ground elevation right there at that tree to try to avoid really any major, major impact to it. So as we work our way up the corridor, we pick up with pavement where we left off from Bridge Road. Again, you'll see this buffering, right? You'll see this kind of crosshatch stripe. That's part of the bike lane. It's buffered for, to separate the vehicles and the bike to give them more space. Let me move this screen over. And I mean, this is basically, as we work our way up the corridor, especially in the south half, we can stay at a five and five. There really is very little impact um, to any landscaping or, or um, you know, other trees in, in, the, in that, regard. So I'm, I'm moving to the next sheet, which is getting us close to Graham. Again, all the way up to Graham, we have that five, five, no real issues. We get to a tree right as we're getting close to Graham. So we're just going to bump up. Here, Kathy's a good example where we might get to a three foot terrace just for a short, short little section so we can get around a tree. Um, you know, and, and we're going to work with the contractor in the field because we all know you know, a survey is so good and our design's only so good, but when we get out there, just like on Bridge Road, there was an oak tree by Cranberry Cafe. We had to work our way around that. We had to put up a little tight, tight pedestrian wall along with the sidewalk to kind of protect that curb. City of Madison is working with us on that. You, you know, we, you go the other way around the tree? we could go the other way around the tree, but the problem is here is the property line. Got plenty of room. And we got another tree right on the other side. So there's a couple trees there. At first I thought it was 
one tree and it looks like you have to go around it. So we have a we have a, just a couple there, but that's that's a good question. You'll see later that we do go around the back side of some trees too. Thank you. Yeah. So here's where we get to our first speed hump. Along this whole corridor, Zach, is there five? Five, five speed humps? Yeah. I think we added five just to show you so we could keep the 500 spacing. Oh, there, there might be four. I think there's five. The five intersections and four humps. Yeah, I think you're right there. So we have Graham here, and this is where there's actually a raised crosswalk. And I want to talk to you about that tonight. There's a couple of them that were proposed that are raised which means they match the elevation of kind of the curb ramp coming off. And there's a, there's three of them, there's a couple of them that are not raised. And the main reason for that is when you raise them, you trap water on both sides. If there isn't storm sewer right there, it's pretty costly to run storm sewer to try to raise that piece. And there, in the places we raised them, there was direct connections to the park, like this is Graham on the other side. Some of you might ask, well, why don't you put it closer to the intersection, Josh? And, the hard part is we have driveway apron, driveway apron, driveway apron, driveway apron. So you got to kind of pick one side and, and get it as close as you can and bring people across and then bring them back into the park that's here on, on, on the northern end. There's a tree on this side, and I tried to list there, remove a, 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 an eight inch red maple tree. I still think we can get around that one. I'm showing it as kind of a, a box right now. And we may be able to, to still wiggle this around or maybe put a curve on right away and avoid that tree. I wanted to just show where there's a potential. I think we can probably still try to avoid that. It's a nice, it's a nice tree. I have a question. Yeah. I'm not clear on that sidewalk to Grant Park. So this did is- Did we have that before? No. No, we did not. No, nope. that's why, I'm, that's one of the questions is we, we mentioned- why do we yeah. Well, we mentioned a couple sidewalks, right? There are crosswalks. And what we mentioned at the meetings or the conversation that was taking place was it'd be nice to have like a bus stop on, on the other side or both sides. And they could oh, kind of, nice. they could be around the, the crosswalks. But at the same time, you know, it's either you're going to let people cross here. And if they're going to the park, they're going to naturally want to walk across either the yard and driveway or they're going to walk in the bike lane, I guess. And if we're okay with that, that's fine. We can get rid of the crosswalk, but right here is right here is the park. So if I go to Street View, let's just look. Yeah, let's look what that looks like. I'm gonna look. You can see this tree here too. So here's the park. The sidewalk would kind of come right between these mantles and kind of end right here, basically. It would cross this driveway and there's that tree that we're trying to, I would hope we could try to avoid. So the crosswalk would come across here and that just takes a simple little sidewalk connection just over to the park to cross that way. Don't have to have it, could have it. We just thought it's the connection to a public space. So how do you use that? That park, yeah, that would be a question for Jake, I guess, and how much use he gets there. <laughs> He does not know about this. Okay. This was something I was going to pitch to you guys and then at the same time pitch to the parks. Well, you know, Jake has put a lot of sidewalks in our parks for ADA compliance yeah. and making it you know, just easier for people to get to wherever they need to be to enjoy the park. But it stops in the middle yeah. of grass. Yeah. I understand that. How does that help? It would just yeah, stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. yeah, there's no other plan. Get that. Is it possible we could add the crosswalk on the other side of the gram? And that way, we don't have to impact the private property. So like put a put a crosswalk right there, taking us taking a, it into ground. So the hump could say where it is. But then right. Put a crosswalk. Like, we wouldn't have to raise that hump. Then we could it could be a little bit more traditional because it would be a crosswalk. But you'd take the crosswalk. I don't know why this that thing keeps coming up. I guess that would make more sense. And just go straight across here. There's a driveway there, Dan. Yeah. So it'd be tight at that radius. It couldn't be. It have to be just like one opening, right? And right. Just painted across. And then that way the sidewalk is solely on city property and the ramp is on city property. We could at least, you know, to, to address the ADA uh, side of it, what we could do is we could have an ADA ramp that would come off of that corner, right? Yep. Yep. With a crosswalk that's ADA to, I always like to put at least an ADA ramp on this side. And that could also be the bus 
maybe like a little bus pad with a little piece of concrete. At least it gets them there. And then from there, they're kind of on their own. Uh, that, that would be a, an alternative too. Mm -hmm. And then we wouldn't have to mess with like the base crosswalk either. Yeah, right. I like the yeah. left side. Is, it, yeah. is that driveway there a park driveway or is it a, is, no. is it a private? That's Tim, a residential driveway. Tim, you have a question or maybe a statement based on this. So is this a spot, because I've been a fan of where there's an intersection, that's where the speed humps go. So just like in Grand Crossing, you've got that really wide space and that's the intersection, okay? Yeah. And that's also the place where people cross. This would be a prime example of where something like that would go. It's not off to the, to the uh, uh, gosh, what is that, the south side? Um, it, it's not off to the north side, it's right at the intersection. I, I think you've done. You guys have done a great job with putting down the the, the the roadway, figuring out where all the stuff goes. What we're kind of working on now is the functionality of it all. And so, if I'm if I live on a neighborhood that where I want to go to Graham Park, and I'm coming down Graham Avenue Street, yep. whatever it might be, I'm going to be on a certain side of the street if I'm walking correctly. Okay, and that's where I should now be able to walk across to Green Park. And you're now making me go to the west, to the to the south, making me now walk across the street and then get onto a sidewalk in order to go to Green Park. If we were to do go from a speed hump to a speed table at that intersection, you could not only walk to Grand Park, but you could walk back from Grand Park on the appropriate side of the street. Right. Cost difference. I mean, significant. Yeah, and we'd add some cost to it. Um, well, now's the time. We'd have to add some inlets on either side to pick it all up. But it's also it. about function. Who's yep. going to walk yep. down Graham, and then they're going to walk over to the left. To the to the to the south, and then they're going to walk there, and then they walk across that sidewalk. They're not going to do that. They're going to walk straight across that intersection. They're not going to walk across where you're putting. I this. agree with you on that. Yeah. yeah, people go where people go. Yeah, that's one of the things I I learned with the playground. That's one of the things that the architect said is is don't put a sidewalk to your to your playground yet. He said wait a year. Find out where the worn path is, and then that's where you put your sidewalk because people go where people go. And so nobody's going to use this thing. And putting the sidewalk over there, and if we have to purchase land, that's a waste of money. Kathy. Yeah, Kathy. Uh, so let's talk about Graham Park. There, it is a, a little used park because. There's nothing there and it gets damp in the summertime. And the people that go there go there for two reasons. One, if you want to sit and watch the lake or watch sunset, or if you want to go fishing. So there is many people who go to Graham who may be walking down the street in either direction as come down, um, come down the road. Um, and so I, I don't know what is the easiest place, but it's but, but there is as much traffic to that park from people who are walking along Winnequa as there are coming down the street. Let's talk about speed control for one second. I believe your speed hump there is gonna give you more speed control than the table road. I know the table works well in that, in the new riverfront, but it's because it's got, it's, it's very urban. It's, there's buildings tight to there and it has two tight curves prior to it that really makes everybody go slow, right? Um, What's on McKenna? McKenna is a speed home like this. Oh, it is? Yeah. Wow. And this, the other two on Winnipeg that are north would be would be the same thing as this. Would be two speed the, 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 chef, the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. the McKenna one is a watered down version of a Yeah, I thought so. Home. It's yeah. very fine. The ones on Winnipeg by the Bay yeah. Shop are the proper design. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
that is an that is an area where I think people going north start picking up speed. When they turn off Winnequa, I mean turn off bridge onto Winnequa, that's when if they're going to speed going north, that's where they start picking up speed. So um I I think that and and that's the where's the next speed control hump or bump or whatever. Yeah, and these are this these are the big conversations that we wanted to have tonight. And, and the, the hardest when we when we were looking at this, the hard part was trying to get the crosswalk on top of the speed hump because the speed hump to get it not in a driveway would put the crosswalk in an odd spot, just like here, right? So and I know leaving some of the council meetings and everybody else has said they were saying we're gonna have the speed humps and we're gonna have the crosswalks going across them. I don't necessarily think we need to do that. Um, and that's where we wanted to get input from, from you guys. And what it sounds like is, you know, maybe what really needs to be here is two painted crosswalks with ramps that go over to the other side. Okay. Maybe that it makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's just they're just and painted. Then it's paint. And then that sidewalk would go away. The one on the uh yeah, right. West. Right. Yeah. Follow the, your crosswalk, and then you put the speed hump where you where it makes sense to have the right. speed. Right. Which I think I would maybe keep it about where it is. And it would just control the speed as you're heading north and they're starting to pick up. Is that about five hundred? Yes. Yep. It's all spaced right, roughly around five hundred ish feet. Or just so the question on the safety was something like that. As myself as a driver coming up to that, I see a speed hump. And I kind of, oh, it's a speed hump. I'm sorry, a little dramatic there. Yeah. <laughs> but, and just beyond that is now a crosswalk. Am I distracted by the speed hump and I don't see this, the, the crosswalk? Well, I, I, I do think that all along on Winnipeg Road where we have crosswalks, we need to mark them well because I live by a crosswalk and I can tell you the pedestrians wait for the cars to go by. The cars don't wait for the pedestrians yeah. to cross. So I think that, you know, you don't put so many, so many crosswalks that people ignore them. You don't confuse them with speed humps when it's not the most sensible thing and that you put them so that you can mark them well and it's logical to to the drivers that that there are pedestrians crossing there and that they are well marked right. and the closer you can keep the crosswalk to an intersection the more drivers going to expect to be there also that's okay. right that's that's where the expectation is for people to cross you know so you're right you'll see the speed hump but then you also should be seeing an intersection and mark crosswalks that's where you expect people to cross you know, mid-block crossings or further away from the intersections do catch people off guard. Um, so yeah. the, the, the speed hump isn't going to be, you know, you shouldn't be able, you should, yes, you should notice it, but at the same time, it's not like it's way up in there that you shouldn't see in front of you. So I think with it being as close as it is to that intersection and, and putting two of them, so they're double striped kind of close here. Mm -hmm. Dan, I think there's going to be a notice that, hey, they're crossing at this location. Mm -hmm. be a crossing event. That makes perfect yeah. sense to me. The other thing is, is, is a note, which we talked about before. Um, you would normally think, well, they would just cross because there's a park there. But for the people who live where they're on, on the west side of the street, if they want their kids, their kids, they will want to get their kids to a crosswalk so they can get to the sidewalk. So it, it, they will, the crosswalks will probably be used more frequently after the sidewalk is put in than they are now. Very true. Yep, they'll tell them to walk up that side and they cross the crosswalks. Right, if it's somewhere you'd want to look like one of those stop things. Maybe yeah. So ideally, I think at the intersections would be yeah. the most sensible. Yep. We, we were talking about just briefly right before the meeting, we didn't show it, um, but we were having a small conversation here of bus stops too, right? For the kids, whether, you know, this side there's a sidewalk, but on the other side of the crosswalk, should we, should we provide a pad of concrete so that if you're on that side of the street, you could wait there. Or on this side also in the terrace, put some extra concrete so there's a little more area than just the sidewalk 
So either side of the street, there'd be a little extra kind of area to wait for the school bus. So on the Graham Park side, if you do the two crosswalks, you have the ramps, then you just put a sidewalk between the ramps and that could serve as your bus. Or that could be a bus area. Right. Yep, that's what I was thinking, Naomi. Uh, there is. So what Stan's saying is we have a crosswalk and a crosswalk, and in between them, we can put just a little sidewalk too that just on city property, on city property that yeah. can be maintained. And it's kind of, you kind of have a bus stop on this side and you can really, I don't know how many kids here, you could just wait on sidewalk. Right. on this side too right and maybe yeah. that's sufficient yeah are we okay with that? that with the, with okay the with school that. board yeah i think ideally both sides would be great but where it doesn't make sense like this yep. makes sense yeah let's go have, have we talked to the school district about bus stops we need to confirm but i from what we understood early and, and from what we discussed tonight again is it kind of travels one way in the morning and the opposite way in the evening so it is dropping it's picking up on one side and dropping off on the other. So e either side should have a spot to potentially wait if we can get it. I'm thinking about where they stop, not just oh. which way they travel. That, is, that depends on where the kids are. Yeah. Right? So yeah. so that could change. change. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that if we put something that's more formal, they may go then they will do that. You know, the bus they don't is, stop the wherever bus a kid lives. They they have a place where the kids who live there go to that stop, and that's right. So many. That's not how it works, though. What happens that I've seen is that the bus stops at driveways mm -hmm. and picks up kids from the houses. Yeah. So if there's kids from the back neighborhood, they just join up with the other kids and their houses, and they pick up groups basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. That's what I've seen. Yeah. But maybe if you, we provide this, maybe they'll use it. But I don't think we have to go over the top. Maybe we could talk to the school district as we kind of finalize this to say, here's some areas that maybe in the future they can promote, you know, like here's mm -hmm. where you should meet at these locations and then just see if it kind of picks up. Maybe naturally it would happen. Oh, well, yeah, I think that if there's spaces to gather. So, what about the Monona lift? Well, that stops where we want, where we tell them to stop. Okay, should we set up a spot for that? We have the opportunity now. The, the lift, they don't. The lift, I yeah. don't think the lift comes has has comes down Winnipeg on its regular route. Well, uh, when I check Google Earth, they show a stop on Bridge Road, almost at Winnipeg. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know anything about the known. They go up. They they go up. Um, they go up Bridge and they go to the senior housing projects. Okay, but up what I'm Minota saying is that on. On Google Earth, it shows a stop for the Monona lift, Monona system, on almost on the corner of Bridge Road and um, Winnequa, up a little and bit. Then, and then they go up to the senior housing well, project. Okay, and that's where they go. But I'm saying there's a stop there. Should we make a provision for that? Yes, I'd argue that if we're gonna do something for the lift in specific spots, we should work with the transportation. Okay, um, so let's work with transportation. Figure out we're, that's we're putting a lot of money into this wow. thing. We've got the equipment. Can we put a little pad up on Bridge Road? Okay. Or the Monona wanna... lift? Yeah. Uh, second question, Dan, um, is that this sidewalk, is this up to the residents to keep this clean, or are we doing that? That sidewalk will be on City Park, City Land. Oh, 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 oh wait, here. Wait. The rest of the sidewalk will all be residential, right? That will be residents. On the east side? side. Yeah, the, the residents are responsible for maintaining the sidewalk. Oh, do they know that? They know that. <laughs> I think we've talked about that. No, we did. No, we, we did. They, they know that. The only place that the city would would be where the sidewalk is immediately behind the curb. And I believe we have an understanding with Mr. Mullins that um, that won't be the case any longer down there either. So there's going to be a terrace. Okay. Um, there shouldn't be any areas along this stretch. There's a couple of really, really small areas that um, we'll have to talk to some residents. It's either a matter of keeping a tree or right. all on the sidewalk. Yeah, but but for the most part, yeah, the residents are, are responsible for putting the sidewalk. Okay. I just don't remember that in any of the public meetings. I spoke in it. So no, I think we, I, I, I thought we were pretty clear in that. You're, you're, Tim, with the multi-use path was, was a different conversation. Right. 
the multi-use uh, path maybe the case, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a different conversation. Right. If it was a multi-use path, then the city would be cleaning it. Okay. Okay. So, so we kind of have a, somewhat of a consensus here, kind of just trying to continue to move forward is two crosswalks, sidewalk on that side for now. We have a little bit of school, maybe communication and some minimal lift communication potentially as part of this, but I think we can work out those details. Um, so that other sidewalk goes. This other sidewalk goes yeah, and we keep good. that tree and everything else. I, I would like to keep the speed hump here, but we will allow, we won't need the extra storm stuff because I can allow it run through the curb, which is yeah, even right, better right. for some of this as far as retrofitting it. So as we work our way up the corridor, um, you know, again, it's still on that side. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, at this we're on the second second page, and and I thought we were kind of running up the corridor, and then we're going to come back for questions. And so I've got a few questions on the first corridor, first page. If you want, do you want to do that now, or should we come back to it? Um, I think if we up to you. What do you guys want to do? If we have questions. Get them done. I think as you go per page. I yeah. say not go to questions. Let's not knock them out. Yep. You, yeah, let's not okay. knock them out. I, I, I'm sorry. This is what I've got here. Okay. Okay. Let's knock them out. Okay. I'll keep um, going. Zach and I'll keep going. Southbound bike path. Yep. Uh, doesn't connect up well to Bridge Road. Does it or doesn't? You said does not. So, so I'm going down that bike path next yeah. to the the. the the uh, the strip that's is a that that what did you call it the the, the buffer, buffer. The bike box. yeah and now I'm going to make a right onto uh, Bridge Road and go yep. around the bike path yep. I'm not going to go straight nobody's going to go straight into that bike path that you have there right here they're going to follow into the auto lane yep is what they're going to do. Yep. And they're going to then do that big jump onto the multi-use path that brings you across the bridge. Yep. And that's what they're going to do. But what you've got here, or what we have existing, I guess, is really awkward to, to make that turn. I've done that numerous times, and it's really awkward to do that turn. Does your Google Earth go back, do the, the, the retro thing? So what was there before you're saying? Yeah. So if you go back to 85. I don't know if we're going to go back on Bridge Road because we hammered that out several times and changed it several times. We had well, other things proposed originally and it was changed from our design originally. Sure, but so, we're there now and it's so, really so I don't know. Awkward. I don't know. So you know how this is going to work, right? So this this bike here, that's a bike lane. That's yeah. the bike lane still striped there. That's for through and lefts. Sure. There's a bike. There's a bike box there because that's the only thing that they could provide instead of striping mm -hmm. this wider on this side. Sure, yes, I, I fully agree with you. What's I that? fully agree with you, and you, you will find nobody that? using that. Yeah. You will find nobody using that. So, is there harm then if they just ignore it and drive down the right turn only lane? Uh, no, there isn't unless there's cars there. Well, they'd have to wait for a car if it's sitting here, or, or they're going to go past it. I've seen that. They're going to try and sneak past it. Right. Okay. I'm, I would propose I would propose suggestions, but I don't. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do to change this as part of this. You're going to end up redoing all the stuff you just did, and then epoxy. No, you're, you're, what you can do is extend what's there a little further, so that they're spending less time in that right turn lane. And they can jump onto the multi-use path earlier. Jim, they, they don't even get to the corner of the bicycle. And uh, I'll explain why. They still going. We live in that area. Yes, I do. But let me mm -hmm. further explain to you that the drawing is missing something. This is my neighbor's driveway right here. Okay. There's a, there's, there's a piece of concrete from here to here. Yeah. You can't see it because it's not marked. So okay. Goes, yeah. Pardon? So they can jump at your uh, at the the uh, right 6223. They can there. jump on there. Yeah, they all do. I have the driveway. They do. 
Yeah, at the yeah, driveway. driveway. But see, this okay. is not marked as being paved, but it is concrete right here. Uh -huh. Okay, so so the plan, what we're seeing here. As I said, the plan is an error. Yeah, okay, yeah, excellent. Where that was picked up from where there was their shirt. Okay. So, so yeah. Tim, what you're suggesting is follow my cursor. Mm -hmm. Would you like to, prior to this turn bay, I think I'm trying to follow where your thought may be going. Would you like to extend this multi-use path all the way to here and have them? No, ramp? not all the way to there. I don't think it's necessary to go all the way to there. Well, you typically would do it the before they drive, get to the right turn. It's perfectly fine. But you do it. You and typically it, would do it before the right turn. Well, you typically would, uh, but I don't think there's that much traffic there. When I've been through there, there might be one or two cars, but it's really tight. People are waiting to make a right. People in the cars are trying to make a right turn. Yeah. Uh, and but they're maybe are stopping for somebody coming down Bridge Road, waiting yeah. for their turn. But another bicycle is coming past, and then they're sneaking past the right side, trying to make that funky little turn onto the multi-use path, which brings them over the bridge. But if uh, man, I, I looked at this the other day on Google Earth, and and I didn't see that path there, Bill. Um, but if it's there, and if you say it's there, then it's there. So if they can jump on um, the neighbor's driveway and get onto that path, then I'm perfectly fine with it. That's the way it is. Okay. That's all on the right of way still. Okay. It's either that or we take it all the way back to before the only reason you do it before is because yes, there may be room here and there's a car sitting here, but you take away yeah. that that weave conflict of yeah. I don't I don't see that many cars sitting in that particular spot on any okay. given day. Okay. okay. What other, what other comment on this one, Tim? Do you have any other uh, comments on the sheet? Let's see. Uh, it's not on this particular screen, but because yeah. we're not really looking at the total part of Bridge Road. One of, one of the uh, neighbor comments was the amount of traffic that not only vehicle traffic or bicycle traffic, but foot traffic that would be coming through the Bridge Road, Winnicott Road intersection. Now we've got the, from your cursor there, going across to the, <laughs> over to the left, I wish I could grab your mouse uh, and, and, uh, and follow that across. But what about the people who are coming from uh, the Pirate Island area? How are they interacting with? Yeah, it's not on. It's not on your paper here. Yeah. Uh, how are they interacting with this intersection? So you might be back to Google Earth on this one. Yeah, I'm forgetting how we mark that, but I thought there's crosswalks. There, There isn't a crosswalk that's marked yeah, through here. Yeah, because there's that big tree on the other side, which we would yep. all hate to lose. Yep, there's right a big there. oak tree. Yeah. I do believe that crosswalk is on the west side, though, um, as you come off the bridge. This crosswalk's here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This crosswalk is definitely, this crosswalk comes across to the big one on, on this side. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here we're, here we're expecting the people to come uh, north on that still bridge road, right? Uh, yep. And um, then so. it's gonna, they're gonna cross onto Winnequa and cross here. to the corner. And then they're gonna cross again to get onto the sidewalk that we're about to install. So as they're coming up here, they're crossing here to here on the sidewalk. Jim, you can see the sidewalk I was speaking of. It goes across my neighbor's driveway and then continues on some. Okay. Okay. See it right now. Yeah. And so it works. I'm, it so works very well. Real comfortable with that, except for the marking on it, because it's a really confusing part of the world. It really so this is. has been changed. This is the old pattern, though, just so everybody knows that. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's so that's not existing. That's not existing, Josh. Parts of this is not existing, but it's been re, it's been, part of this has been reconstructed. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. this right turn bay was taken out. I see where I have to go from, 
have one computer doing this and another computer to look at Google Earth. Google Earth is not up to date on this intersection. Well, mine, mine has a system where you can go back to 1985 and see yeah, <laughs> so it sounds like we need to rethink, I guess, based on your comments, Tim, and we can go back and we can show this intersection more is we need to make sure the striping and rethink the entire striping of this intersection to make sure it all makes sense. From what well, I'm hearing- across the bridge, really. It's, it's because you've got a bike path and you've got the multi-use path going on at the same time. Yep. They're all gonna have the same crosswalk though. They're not gonna have separate crosswalks. Um, true. Yeah. There, there's, are, definitely are, a, there's definitely a crosswalk that goes straight across and comes this way. So I'm just wondering, do we want it on all sides of the road? Is that what we're trying to get at maybe? Sure. Thinking I think that's okay. helpful because yeah. you do have a bike lane that goes on the bridge. other side of the yeah. bridge. And that's the, if you're a biker, it's the logical place to come into Monona on that side with the traffic. And then you, you make a left turn across that intersection with the traffic. Yep. But it, Tim, it, it is, is your concern about Pirate Island? Because if you're coming from Pirate Island, you would be a fool to try and cross on the, um, on, uh, on the bridge road side. Um, what is it, the west side? You would want to cross on the east side, where so you don't have to compete with with the pedestrians. I mean, with the cars and all that traffic and that cars turning, it's just much easier to cross right there on on the um, on, on that must be the the easterly side of Bridge Road, and I don't see any problem there. So, if you're talking about pedestrians coming, I. I See, you'd want to cross on this side of the street where this tree is. Yeah. So one thing, I, just out of caution, just so I'm understanding everybody, we're not going to put ramps in on this side up against this nice oak tree. We're just going to mark crossings across the street so that if people are coming down Pirate Island on this side, as you're, as you're talking about, Kathy, there's a crosswalk that goes across Bridge Road to the sidewalk on on yep, that and, side. The, and there's now a stop sign there. So yeah, it's yes. a four-way stop. So so and that's that that is the path of least resistance if you're trying to get to Winnicqua. Personally, there I don't there aren't many people who come down to Winnicqua. If they do anything, they go down towards down towards um, the, the down towards the new development to the coffee Excuse shop or to the restaurant. I, I do think this is a really good point because the people that are going to be walking on this new sidewalk and they come and they're going to the new development, they would logically cross at the sidewalk going straight across Bridge Road to that oak tree. And then they're going to cross Winnequa on the Pirate Island side. Yep. And then they're going to be on a sidewalk all the way to the development going yep. along Bridge Road. Yep. That, that's absolutely the, the, you know, logical path. It's a path of least resistance. It's, it's the safest way to go as long as the drivers are smart enough to stop at the stop signs, which one time they weren't. So the image we're looking at right now is not from 2021. The image we're looking at right now is, I. I'm thinking that based on my Google Earth from 2010, this is before the rebuild. Yep, totally, I agree. And this is more what I'm interested in, is that there's a, a significant space here for bicyclists and pedestrians because and runners who are gonna still be on the road. I mean, even though there's a sidewalk, they're not gonna stay up necessarily go on the sidewalk they're going to be coming down this way and they're going to be jumping off onto they, they have to jump off into this somehow and what we have right now is is really truncated we need to make it smoother 
I'm confused. I don't I'm, follow. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not following, I'm, Tim. I'm confused, too. If we have that sidewalk along the east side, it doesn't show here, obviously. We can cross Buenaco Road or Bridge Road. You and have, all have, that is is striping. I mean, I, if that's... I'm almost positive you're like, striping all the way around the yeah. side. Yeah, I'm almost positive you have four striping. We, we striped it all exactly how we're talking. I, I can't yeah. say it 100%, but I'm almost 95% positive all this has been striped all the way around. Well, you know what? It. And if it yeah, weren't, we it's easy it. to yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so spent an hour around it. So, uh, Josh, does your does your Google Earth yeah, no, I'm with you. have the, the where you can look back? I'm going to the stripes. Uh, that you have that might like show that, that shows that whole so give me one second. Like no, I don't I don't in front of me, Tim can can't pull up like the 21. Do you have that on are you on Google Earth instead of Google Street View? I, I have Google Earth Pro. Yeah, yep, that's why you're seeing it. So um, I don't know if Google well, is. I'm seeing the image from, from 2021, from, from September of 2021. Is Tim's concern still the biking along the west side going towards Bridge Road? That's it further down. Yeah, it'll be. So, do you have a screen that you want to share, Tim? I, I'm not sure how I can do that to tell you the truth. Because uh, right now I'm on my laptop and, and I've got to go, Google Earth like Pro on my it. desktop. Yeah, it's not going to show. Yeah. yeah. Can we put a pin in this one and and make sure that that this is yeah. looked at? Yeah, I think we can. Um, yeah. you know that, that we we're clear that we want. You want crosswalks, crosswalks all the way around the side. All the way around. The it still sounds like Tim has a concern yeah. about some sort of biking and something else that's happening. That I don't know if I if I understand it, Tim. And I I apologize. I'm trying to. I just. Yeah. I, so I guess what I'm after is if you're if you're on a bicycle. Or, or if you are a pedestrian and choose to be in the bike lane, heading um, south on Winnequa, and you're going past Bill Padel's house, and how do you transition easily onto the multi-use path that's bringing you across the bridge on Bridge Road? And right Instead now, it's a pretty it, it, awkward it, way of doing it. The, the bike path that takes you across Bridge Road or along Bridge Road? the bike path that brings you to Bridge Road as well as over the bridge. Bridge Road and turning right onto Bridge Road. I think you're right there. Yeah. I think you're right there. I know. Just from the place I If they're walking down this side. It's supposed to be a bike path, but they'll walk on it. In this, you're, you're saying the, the west yeah. side bike path. You're saying that they may be walking in that bike lane? No, oh, they're people. Okay. Well, right now, it is the side that is where people walk. That is where people walk. That's where people walk. We can't do anything about that. So, you're, yeah. are you, you saying that? Bridges? How do we stop people from walking on this multi-use? No, package? no, no. So, so right now, what I'm looking at here is where you got your cursor. Yeah. Okay. The bike path and the the uh, uh, the buffer ends at a certain point. Way back and here. Way back there. And you're yep. expecting pe the, the bicyclist to now go straight. Okay. Follow well, the, the, bike, the, 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 the bike, the bike, the bike will go like this or they'll go straight this way. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what you're expecting them to do. And then you're actually expecting them to stop and wait for traffic, which of course with bicyclists is ridiculous. And is there a way that we can have it so that bike lane follows the curb line and then jumps up onto the multi-use path or the bike lane that is necessary over going over the bridge. You want you, you want the bike lane east of the closer to the property to the terrace 
and not the and not to, and not the. I think lane. that's the way people would use it. Right. So what he's saying is, you're saying remove this bike lane, stripe it over here, and don't mm -hmm. have a bike lane here. So anybody that wants to do a through or a left hand turn has will have to go against the right turning traffic, which is a little atypical. Yeah. That's why you have it out here. Well, this is not for the right turner. Oh no, no. I, I guess I'm looking for safety. That's for the through and light. That 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 line there, that bike lane line, is for the through and left hand turner, not the right hand okay. turner. Okay, that's fine. But most people are making a right turn. But no one uses it for a right turn. They're not going to use that for a right turn. Everybody, everybody who goes around the lake makes a right turn. No, no, no. Yeah. Nobody, not in the spot you're saying. Nobody is using this lane here for a right turn. Correct. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't. No, I, I fully agree. I fully agree right. with you. How are they making a right turn? They are following the right turn lane, and they're either making oh, it as a there's no bike path there. Well, that's, there's no bike path there. So then there's a, the only solution I see to this is, well, they use the road like they would use anywhere else, but what, what they would do is you'd extend this over to here and you would make a ramp and signage to tell them to get off and get on here. The reason that they stay on road here is because the bike lane continues through. They do not have to get on this multi-use path. A lot of them will turn right here. And I've seen that. They just turn right and stay on the bike lane. There's a bike lane there on the road. They don't really want to jump up on that path. Or do they do that or they... Do they jump up onto the multi-use span? I think it's kind of a 50-50. I've, I've watched the intersection too, and I see people come around and they just let's stay on the bike lane that's on the road. So they have two Josh, options. They can, they can stay on the road or go on the multi-use path. Josh, I've seen some things, I think maybe in Fitchburg or in Fish Hatchery, where there are turn lanes, and there are parts of it that are turn lanes that and bus lanes that have bicycle markers in them, and they are shared. Yep. yep. And so, so the question is, if the bikers are going to use this, is there a way that you could put a bicycle thing and make it a shared lane? You could just put a share in it. You're saying to say share, share with bikes or something. Yep. And, and, and you know they're going to do it anyway. And this mm -hmm. just gives pedestrian the notice that bikers have rights on that part of the street. Is that illogical? I mean, I, I'm sure I've seen that on, on, okay. on Fish Hatchery. I can't hear you, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I don't. yeah, yeah, you can put it there. Yeah. Okay. You so put it the there, times I've put gone. Put it there because vehicles aren't expecting bikes to be there, I guess. But if bikes are using it already that way, then that's how they're going to use it. So, yeah, you it, it's there so that bikes and cars know that they're going to mix together. So maybe we put a Shero arrow there that says, hey, bikes and cars are here together, or we extend that ramp further out if we want to pick them up. I, I really think it's better designed than we're, I mean, I think what's there right now works very well for people that are going south on Winnequa and turning right onto yeah. the multi-use yeah. path. Yeah. I mean, I have done it hundreds of times. It works well. It seems the problem is going the other direction, and we're not even talking about that, that's but I don't care. Well, like, that's next uh, topic, yeah. I mean, we beat this a lot when we did the bridge to try to figure that out. Correct. Are we doing it again? But I mean, I think we've done, we've already solved this particular problem and we can agree that it's not perfect it's and not it will perfect. never be perfect. But I no, wish we no. could focus on when a quote wrote, um, you know, I, I would just say this is, this is the intersection isn't part of the project. It, right. The, this intersection is it, not a part of the project. And, and I, for one, want to say I want to focus on the thing that we're rebuilding. I don't think it's a problem at the intersection. I mean, there was one of the big reasons we took the right of way away before we stopped. So, because it was already hard for vehicles yeah. and bikes to go across to try to get to the other side. Correct. So, we took one step. We couldn't completely solve it. It's, it's part of this loop. It's tough. It's part of this loop. It's okay, though. It's okay. If we have good pedestrian accommodation tied to the new sidewalk, I think we've done our job. And I would disagree with that. All I'm suggesting is that we take the existing concrete that's there, which is not what you have on your, your screen, Josh. Yeah. It is actually what's on this written screen, what, what I'm looking at here, sure. and that we move that back a bit further not all the way back because there are not really that many cars 
that back up there. You know, you, you don't have cars backed up all the way to uh, uh, Bill Padale's house. I mean, I've never seen that before. That would be a really unusual situation. What I'm suggesting okay. is that we move what we have there back to maybe the next driveway. And then people have a place to jump onto that path, that multi-use path, because we're not talking people who commute and use this thing every day. We're talking about who rent a B site. You just stay on. Sounds like that is my neighbor's driveway. You know what we need to explore? Yeah. Okay. I get where he's coming from. Okay. Um, so anything else on this sheet? So, so what did you just, what did you just write down? I wrote down that we need to explore the bridge road intersection, um, for crosswalks on all four sides, and then look at solutions or potential options for, um, the bikes that you're, that you're accommodating on that right turn. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this two years ago. And I'd love to hear if you have any other solutions. Um, well, I, I think what we what the time we spent on it two years ago, I don't think it completely finished it. I think we have an opportunity now. Right, and it sounds like you just want to extend the concrete along that side. Yeah, basically, yeah, I think that will do the what what I'm concerned about. Yeah, and it sounds like you're more concerned about uh, uh, bikes going around cars that are waiting to turn right than the conflict of cars and bikes that are crossing this point, and most traffic people would tell you that it's the cars and bikes that cross this point as they weave past each other, potentially the through bikes or the left bikes, oh, sure. then, then the bikes hanging on the side of the curve. So, And, and my suspicion is that the number of people, the number of bicycles that go straight or make a left are very few. Right, right, right. As the loop, you bet. Kathy? Uh, yeah, I, you know, we need to Everybody has their thoughts on what they want fixed, but it's really the consensus of the committee and what we need done. So if we're going to make major changes, we have to make sure that a majority of the committee um, thinks the change being proposed makes sense. I, I just want to put that out there. Well, here's my thought. Is if you're going to explore things um, for that intersection, we never get to see it again before it goes anywhere. Yeah. It seems to me that that intersection can be handled with paint. Well, what he's yes, talking no. about is getting the bikes off the road sooner. So well, if he wants to back up that, uh, I mean, it's, it's not yeah, going to be can. hard to add concrete and back this up as far as you want me to back it up and put a ramp in. But wait a minute, Tim, um, <laughs> the way it is right now that, that is agreeable easy. to you, right? The, way, the he wants it, he wants conditions it out there right now, when you ride your bike and turn right onto the bridge, that's agreeable to you, the way it is right now? Uh, well, the way that you do that right now, and I mean, uh, a number of you are bikers, and, and you maybe you know that intersection better than I, but as I come down here, um, and I'm trying to do this because we, this would be so much easier if we were all in person, but uh, Oh, could you bring that back, Tosh? I'm going to look for other files. You can keep going. Hold on. I'm, I'm just well, looking to I, I, I was hoping to use that as an illustration. Um, so as I come to the corner there, so let, let imagine that I'm going down the, 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 the bike lane here. I've now gone past uh, uh, Bill Padel's house, and there's that first right turn arrow that we all see on the screen, and then there's the next right turn arrow that's on the screen. And then when we get up to the corner over here where the crosswalk comes in, that's my that's my only opportunity to jump onto the multi-use path. I have to come up to that no. corner. No. That's, not, that's not true. That's not how many times we got it. You you get on that at the driveway, Tim, that is that is on the where the arrow is or where your arrow was. It's yeah, that, that driveway is that driveway. I, yeah. Okay. That's the way it's done now. And you and you 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 get right onto the cement there. There's a ten foot wide multi-use path 
the dump send to that driveway. If it's not there, we'll put it there. Please. It's put there. It it's there. Yeah. 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 It needs yeah. to be on the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not there, no, I, I'm, I'm I looking at leave you it is. September yeah. of 2021. So and it stops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I'm sorry I'm taking so much time on this thing, but I, I, I've just seen where the functionality of this whole thing. And so can we put this in as a big question mark? That's all I'm asking. Is yeah, that that this be where we are now? And if we can extend that concrete back further. So they can believe I have the floor? Can I have the floor? Okay. If we can extend that back further, I'll be happy. Can I have the floor? Okay. If we can extend that back further to the driveway, which the picture I'm looking at right now says it doesn't go back to the driveway. It works great. Yeah. For right to, it. For so if we can far. move it back further so we can get the bikes off of the street faster before the intersection, I would like to explore that further. The, Tim, the bike lane goes right into the pavement. There's, you don't have to be in the traffic lane at all on Winnequa when you're going south and you're headed into Bridge Road and Madison. It works very well. Can we explore it? Can we look at, at a little if bit deeper? Works, if something works well, why would we try to, to alter it? I think because I don't believe it works well. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just I, I, I make a motion. We leave it. We leave it as is. I, I, that. That. <laughs> I have a motion and a second on the floor to leave the current plan for the bridge road intersection as is. I, I just have a comment, Tim. I'm I'm confident that they're right, but it comes before the council, and I I guarantee you that Jennifer and I will go down and take a look at it before the council. Makes a decision. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Good. Thank you. So we have a motion. A motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of leaving that section as it is indicated by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. Motion passes. But I promise you, Tim, we'll check it out and report back sure. to you. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Are we done with the first page, Jennifer? Do you want to go to the second Let's go to the next section. Yeah, we talked about the second one. Yep, I think we, we, we all kind of agreed just holistically on some crosswalk changes here, right? And leave speed on. Yeah. And get rid of that. Um, moving to the third page is when we get close to Greenwood. Again, we have um, a speed hump just prior to that intersection to the south. And then we kind of got into this crosswalk thing again, where we just kind of threw a crosswalk in here just to represent how we figure out, feel like the crosswalk has to get, again, closer to that intersection, right? And maybe there's one on both sides of the road like we talked about before, but in this case, do we want to put some concrete on the other side for just the stop when they get off the bus, um, if there is there? The hatching you can see is all around this intersection because there is landscaping. And I can drop a person down on this intersection just so you can see what it's like. I don't think it's terrible, but there's just, um, you know, I, I try to vision where are they gonna wait, right? And, and like, will they walk along the corridor if it's all landscaped? The bump out's coming out. So the curb's gonna be back in here. Well, it is is that where we're putting the curb on the same side that the bus does pick up or drop off? They do pick up on the east side and drop off on the west. Yeah, so they're on both sides. So they'll pick up on one and drop off on the other. Well, you don't need to stop. I mean, when they drop, the, everybody stops, the kids get off and they scatter. It's not like they wait for the bus there. That was my oh, issue. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't bring on the east side, but it's necessarily on the west. Thank you. And, and it's probably more important to have a, a 
place for them to stand on the side where there isn't a sidewalk. Um, well, if they're dropping off on the west, they scatter anyways. So I don't know that they're going to wait on the west side. Right. So I, when, when we put this together, we put an optional, let me go back to that. We just said, you know, potential crosswalk location, right? But do we even want one here? Yes. Do we want to cross people here? Or do we at least want crosswalks there? If they're on that side, they can come back across at the intersection. Um, I just wonder the bus where the bus drops. I mean, I know yeah. they usually go to people's homes, but I don't know how many kids live. I don't, I don't know where. I think the hard thing with bus drops is they do change it from time to time I know, based on I how know. many kids are at what street or where they're going to, you know, yeah. it's really hard to plan for school bus drops. It really, really is. is. Right. I think if we did something at either intersection, that would be sufficient. Yes. And it could be on one side if we think that the west side is not going to be necessary because they're dropping off on the west side as opposed to waiting there in the morning. Yeah. Um, I think that would be sufficient. You know, we, we would just make it in conjunction with the sidewalk on the east side. So what you're saying is no additional concrete on the west side, just the crosswalk. Not Sorry. necessarily, unless we wanted to put an apron here so that it's going to oh. something that's right. You know, they'd be stepping off on the sidewalk onto concrete. So if you put an apron, whether it's on this side or we have a crosswalk on, on this side, I guess it could go on either side of the road here, right? Um, you'd put an apron in just a little chunk of a square of, of sidewalk there. You would just have an ADA ramp and, and a oh. square of sidewalk. Just so, to question if, if you put not a sidewalk, but a bus stop. Who's responsible for maintaining that? That's if it's a bus stop, it would be the city. Yeah. So we're going to make the city, we're going to send them out to do these bus stops, which may or may not be used because the bus is may Let me clarify. Let me clarify. If it's Monona Transit, we would maintain it. If it's a school bus stop, we wouldn't. Right. If it was a piece of concrete, you would, or just randomly there, no. you wouldn't make it. No. I, can, I, I just get concerned if we have a piece of concrete, it's not maintained, and somebody slips and falls. So therefore, do we have to maintain it? And are we going to maintain something that's not going to be used? I mean, likely what happens now, if this bus is coming down this road, do you think they're pulling up to a driveway location and yes. there's a bunch of snow there? Like, for instance, oh. my cursor's like on this driveway, right? Yeah. They're probably stopping here, letting the kids get out, and then they scatter, right? Whether they're exactly. crossing the street or... So do we want to add, is this sufficient? And do we just want to add crosswalks yes. that are on the street? Yes. Right. Yes. Here, here, maybe, maybe on both sides. Just on both sides, just to show that this is a crossing for pedestrians. Yes. 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 And yep. no concrete on the other side, knowing that there's a there, there's driveway right there, and that's where they're going to drop it. Right. And the crosswalk will provide a space that they can get into it, at least cross it at the intersection. Correct. I mean, it should be safely connected to the actual sidewalk. On the other side. Just dead end into yeah. the curb on yeah. the other side. On, on this side, you will connect it to the sidewalk with right. the ramp. Right. On the other side, it will just end at the curb. Yeah. Correct. Right. Um, but you know, in this case, it's going to end at the curb, basically right where this almost this driveway picks up too. So, you know, I, I'm almost wondering. That's the question Zach and I were debating a little bit: is do you need do you need this spot, or you just use a big piece of concrete that's already there and, and kind of lined it up on some of these? For the best we can do, you know, then creating other concrete that the homeowner would have to shovel, right? Because per city ordinance. They have the residents that. are responsible for crosswalk ramps, right? And, and it's and it's in landscaping area, which the kids aren't going to want to walk or get out on, or actually snow's all piled up around it. Anyways. And it's going to change as the kids change. Yes, it will. As the households change. Yep. So I, I really don't see a need for the for the crosswalk there. You're you're bringing them across the street to nothing. Yeah, and the problem There's is that if, if if you put in one or two, you know bus stops, concrete pads along the way, everybody's going to want one. Not just at the crosswalks, but even where we don't have them. And where do you start and where do you stop? I would like to see them on every intersection. And a that's crosswalk. It. We wouldn't put them 
where everybody else wanted them unless they wanted to pay for them. Yeah. So Jennifer, if we have a line at the intersections, does the sidewalk on the east side constitute space for a bus stop, or do we want to carve out a specific space off the sidewalk for concrete? Well, so this one, for example. Yeah, that one's the. You've got this going here. Yep. Potentially the apron goes here. Yep. Yep. Bus is going to come here. Kids are going to have to climb over and use a lot of snow storage. Here. Well, this would be so. In this case, there's a there's a crosswalk here, uh -huh. and there would be a ramp here too, because there would just be a marked crossing that would go here. So you'd have a ramp and a ramp. So would, are they okay in the morning get picked up at this space, or do you want more concrete there? So this is. I think the sidewalk and ramp would suffice. I would agree. Yeah. I would think. I guess that if it's if it's just it's one side. Yeah, right. It'd be one. It would be one large without, bed. Yes. Without, one large bed there. Right. Because they're so close. That, then I guess that would be. I think you'd have enough space probably to constitute that as like enough for a, a grouping of, of kids to probably stay in. As long as you make it like you said, large enough. And yeah. You know, this is five and that's five. You might almost have like a what, 10 could, by 10 area there. Can, can, can someone tell me where we are on bus on bus stops? Are, are we going to do bus stops or not? So what we're, we're just saying here, for instance, at, at, Green, at Greenwood Street, you know, if there is a crosswalk that just crosses here, um, there'd be a ramp, a ramp in this section too that would cross there. So all this area would essentially be concrete, you know, on these corners to cross. Right. Um, so you would kind of, I mean, the bus stop would be the corner aprons. It would be the corner kind of crossing of sidewalks in your, in your pad ramps, your ADA. You don't no, want to leave, um, you want to leave green there. For, for them to maintain, just make it concrete that yes. way. Just, yeah. Yeah. Why? just a little bit bigger, a little bit more concrete. I, I'm still not following. Are you, are you talking about putting concrete on nothing? Nothing, nothing, okay, not, so nothing on the west side. side. <laughs> I'm good. Except just a strike crossing at well, the yeah. intersection just so people can still cross. cross. Yeah, okay. if, they, if they want to, they can cross in a safe, in a safe area. Yeah. Are, are we putting crosswalks on both sides if we want? That's just, I mean, I'm fine with that. If that's what we want to do, just straight the mold. So, so why do we want to encourage them to cross the street? They, have to so go the side too. they may live over there. Well, um, how many people live over there? What's the lake? Many, it's, well, it's sure. I understand. There's more, more on, I guess, if, if it's a bus stop, that's fine. If there are people, but, but we're, we're bringing them across the street to nowhere. So the hard part then, Tim, so just, just think of it this way. And I, I agree. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people crossing the street, but let's say somebody lives three, three houses down, sure. but they're walking along the sidewalk. Would you like them to cross here and then just walk in the bike lane? Or do you want them to just, just randomly do a diagonal across the street at a random point? I guess what I'm saying is that it, it really isn't what I want them to do. It's what they're going to do. And they're going to walk down the sidewalk and then they're going to cross directly across it. From but, their but, but, give them the opportunity but, to do it right. But the problem is right now, people walk it on, on, on the east side, on the west side of the street. People, children walk in the parking lane. We're taking the parking lane away. So if you live on the west side of the street, you don't have really safe passage. So you want them to cross over to the sidewalk. And in order to do that, you have to have a crosswalk. I mean, I thought that was part of the plan because the safety should be for the people who live there as well as the people who walk from other parts of the, of the city. And you want to give drivers the expectation of where pedestrians are going to be. Is the appropriate spot for a crosswalk because it's at an intersection. It provides a safe place to cross versus a mid block crosswalk to nowhere. Mm -hmm. I'm totally on board with that. Good. Do you have other questions for this section? No. I would like to make a motion that yeah, maybe it's, this maybe committee it's endorses putting crosswalks at every intersection along this stretch of rebuilt roads. Because it's just paint. 
Yeah. Right, it's just pain. Yeah, that's the thing. I'll second that. Okay. There's no consideration on here, but yeah. this is a minor enough thing that we can do because it's in the parking. Right. Versus yes. changing yeah. the design. Yes. Yes. This, yes. this is not a this is one where if we decide that and yeah. we come back and some, you know, yeah. for right. whatever reason, right. something, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Sure. But I mean Alder Similar. Thomas made the point. I think as a committee, I, I suspect we have at least 80% consensus on this topic. And I'm just trying to put another thing that we're that? debating yeah. the rest. Oh, I there's, there's no action. No, we, no action. So we really well, I'm just looking for right. something. Yeah. But we can yeah. do consensus. We can, a little bit. We can yeah. do consensus. Yeah. Consensus would be nice so that when it leaves this committee and we go to the council, we can say, here's the consensus that we have as part of the committee. Right. It's all and I don't think anyone's going to bug intersection crosswalks. Okay. There's there, there's no lines. It's, it's very minimal. Okay. So you pay yeah. them in areas where you have no sidewalk at all. Right. Nichols is a prime example, Nichols and Winnipeg. So for Malady Spinsick, can you pull your motion to the table since we're not really supposed to be considering? Oh, okay. I'll pull it. Pull my motion. I thought I was helping you. Yeah. That's... I just I don't want to like do the wrong thing here. Gotcha. Uh, so. so you have what you need for this section. Yes. All right. Yep. Um, oh. Just so you know, there is some sections in this section where we are going around some trees. In this case, you mentioned them behind, behind some trees. So we will have a little bit of that. Not a lot, it is in short sections. So this goes behind. Yes. Um, do we have enough space to straighten out the to be sure that we've got a straight um, crosswalk. crosswalk to the net. Not angling into the road. into the street. Yeah, and we, we were going to kind of clean up some of these too, and we could even do more where we're going to bend back a little bit more and make sure that's straight. Yeah, that's yeah. Straight. Yeah. The, I guess from what I understand, the property owners took the property the and they were advocating for this behind the trees. Yep. So um, I don't know if that changes anything either. Well, the hard part is. You know, the, the other option is here we can't really go in front of the tree, but mm -hmm. we can kind of go through. So then they lose a couple of trees here. And they really want to lose the tree. We don't want to do that. We can kind of, I think we can kind of, in a couple of these areas, you can see where we can kind of just, we can skirt around the trees fairly, in a fairly good fashion. And this, they're really going to come in and they're just going to dig this out. Um, and really not interrupt the trees on either side. So they're just going to come in and match it right with this in the ground. Josh, if you talked, to um, to the, the to the buyers and to the Oswegan or the people who live at these intersections to see if they want you to go around. I have not. I, you have you have or you have not. No, nope. I've just avoided trees based on all the council and everything that we don't want to cut anything down. Period. This is the public right of way, so the we city entirely know. does what it decides it does. I, I am well aware it's the public right of way. Um, I'm just um, concerned about practicality because at night, if, when, as, when it gets towards dusk, they will go, they will, um, people, there will be reluctance, I think, on the part of some people to go back in dark spaces because I'm gonna tell you, the lighting on the street is not good. And so um, I don't know, I don't know what the owners would prefer, but from a pedestrian standpoint, um, it would be better if we didn't. So I just wondered if we asked the owners of the property what they thought, because I don't know how many trees we'd actually lose there. Well, my question, Kathy, then, and, and I, I'm fine with however you answer, however we answer this, is if we talk to those residents and they say, you know what, I want to keep it five foot off like everything else and just blow through the trees, those are actually city trees. Yes. What is what is this committee and what is the council going to say? That's you know, we're, I just want to make sure we're we're, we're in the right place here. Right. How many trees would we lose, Josh? Um, you lose six big ones along that road. Okay. Okay. On either side of Greenwood. Yeah. Yeah, you would. You'd lose those six. Um, and we are trying to avoid some of the bigger ones for sure, if we could. I'm not sure exactly how big. Oops. 
these ones are here and I don't have them written on there. So you're gonna lose these couple here and then four on this side, which these aren't necessarily real big. Again, this picture is a little old, but you're gonna lose the tree. You're gonna lose the four along the side. It's gonna look different. Okay, I just- Again, however we wanna answer this, I'll take direction, but I just, I, I know what some of the committees were stating, Kathy, and I agree. It's like the landowner might have some, some say and the council might have some thought to it. And we were just trying to not impact at all if we could. But I get your fact of we're bending the sidewalk back, you know, behind some of this stuff. And in the summer, the lighting's not going to be great. In the winter, it shouldn't matter as much because all the leaf cover will be off. But um, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I mean, I just get if you know if you walk back there when it's dusk, it's this because the trees are so big in this area, the lighting at night is it's terrible. It's dark. Yeah. So you're gonna lose like these couple on the corner, this one, and then the farther one back over yeah. on that side. So you kind of lose that. You know, you're going to kind of lose that front of some of these instead of basically what's happening here is it's coming through it's staying just behind just behind these and then going back up so it's tough these are these are tough on these wooded sections so two questions with that if i may ma'am yeah um the the specs here say that between the sidewalk and the street is a grass terrace now, in these particular parts, like Byers and Oswegans, um, I mean, Oswegans have those beautiful blue flowers, like bluebells or scylla or something like that. And do they have the opportunity to have that on both sides of that sidewalk and continue that? Because that would be a wonderful little walk through place. And, and the other question that Kathy brought up too is the lighting here. We haven't addressed the lighting at all. Should we be addressing the lighting? Standard, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the spacing on the lighting is industry standard. Um, it's not supposed to light up the entire street. I mean, if you if you start doing that here, um, the rest of Monona that's, that's tree covered is, is in the same situation. Um, yeah, that, that might have to be a policy decision coming from the top about adding more street lights. Um, that, that not only you know, it adds to the, the annual polar bill, uh, the purchase of the poles. Well, but that's also a, a safety issue. I just think that, but, but I think we have to, if we're going to do this, we go ahead and do this. And if the, and if the lighting is a problem, then we have to address it. But we don't know. How bad it, it will, how you know how dark it will be until we actually do the project. Seven trees. Sorry, it's Seven okay. Trees. I mean, it's also true that we can put in lighting that's designed for a pedestrian path. It's not a street light so much. I mean, you can put in lighting that's like an eight-foot decorative path lighting that, that provides more safety and it makes it beautiful and. You know, if that becomes an issue for the community, then by all means, you know. But aren't we a community that would save some nice mature trees and put a little lighting on the path and say we've we've done our due diligence? I mean, I thought that was I thought that was essentially the consensus. I don't think anyone here is arguing that we we can't illuminate a place, but I think we're trying to save the big trees if we can. Yeah, so right here in this corner, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them that were eight, eight that were trying to kind of go around and then come back. Because then you have nine, 10, 11, right? These are all six inches or larger. You know, there may be some small stuff in there that, you know, would be two or three inch caliber that, yes, we're going to go through. The idea is to try to kind of keep some of the larger canopy. And, and when you keep the larger trees and you get rid of the scrub trees, you open it up and you can prune those trees so that they're good sight lines and you can solve a lot of problems. I think you'll open it up at some of these yeah. areas more than what it feels like today. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm going to move to sheet three. Sheet three. 
I went way too far. That's not three. I was getting excited. Sheet seven. Is that where we are? Sheet seven? We just finished seven. We were on eight. Seven, eight. Yep, yeah, there we go. Eight is Frostwoods. So again, what you see at Frostwoods is that same that same bump, um, hump. And we're gonna go back from what I'm kind of hearing is probably just two crosswalks again along here, just to, again, there's a driveway here, right? Where potentially, you know, a bus could stop and you could have something on that side and we have a crosswalk that would be basically right next to it. Um, so we would put the two crosswalks in here. We're trying to avoid some of the trees. Most of the sidewalk in this section is staying five and five, five feet off a five foot terrace with a five foot walk, besides a few of the things that bend around. Um, on the one side, you know, on the far, on the far side, you can see we're going, we're going up against the sidewalk or up against the curb, maybe in one section there. There's not a whole lot that I had for comments in this section, Zach, unless I'm missing something we wanted to ask about here. I, I just have a question, and, and for everyone to know, this is a personal question because it affects my property. I'm just curious on on the on the on the properties on the west side of the street. Are you moving the curb back at all? No, the west side curb on this whole corridor stays exactly where it is. We do not touch the west side curb anywhere, Kathy, as part of this project. Okay, I'm just. Trying to figure out if I have to replant my garden. Oh, 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 Zach was going to stop me. Thank you. <laughs> Except for the bump outs. So yes. it, in, in this area, at these intersections, you can see this little kind of highlighted darker section here and how we're replacing a driveway apron. This bump out is coming out on this side. So I'm going to zoom in. So all the bump outs, you can kind of see this dashed line. That's a bump out. And this that comes along here. So that's coming out and we're putting a curb straight through. So in this section, yes, the bump out is coming out. The curb's kind of taking the place right to the back where the bump out was. So there may be a little bit of landscaping along that edge, Kathy, but nothing else. You know, we're talking right up of where that bump out kind of ends today. Okay, there, there is a, a comment for, for Dan. There are some properties along this road that um, do not do a good job of maintaining the terrace. And we're getting rid of the, the, the um, parking lane. So it, sometimes it, because there's, it goes over into the bike lane, the bikers have to go out in the road to avoid it. So we need to make sure, and, and uh, I can certainly, have Frost Wood send a notice out to the members, but but they need to do a better job of cutting back the, the, the weeds and brush and keep them out of the bike lane. Yep, and that'd be a, that'd be for the code enforcement officer to uh, to go out there and get in touch with the property owners to to enforce that part of the code. Yeah, it, it is to me it's somewhat embarrassing because people don't take care of the, the street stuff and it and it infringes, it makes it difficult for bikers along there. The, the, the code enforcement officer reports to the city administrator. So that'd be the route I would go if I were you. Uh, uh, be, he doesn't report to me, he, he's not in public works. So we, we would only get involved um, if there's a failure on the property owner side of things. Okay, well, I will monitor it and report it if, it, if I think it's a problem. Okay. But that, that would be the one to follow up on it. So thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so I, I just put up there kind of what that looks like, Kathy, just so you could see it. So the curb yeah, it's, the, it's the one, it's the one where it's, it's right there is the worst, but this sometimes gets bad too. Yeah. So the curb will be right to the back of where this this concrete was. That's that would be the only impact on the west side is, is removing these bump outs and putting a curb yeah. along there, and then replacing a little bit of a driveway apron to do that work. So that's 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 what you were seeing in in, in this section here. We were looking at at those properties. I always thought this property right here was the problem, mm -hmm. personally, but 
Mm -hmm. I know the, the 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 front yard is very sloppy. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I thought the problem was, but <laughs> maybe I'm. Well, I'll be sure and report those people. Hey Josh, uh, is there any way to save those those three trees that are in that clump there? Yeah, so you know we could bend in closer here too. Mm -hmm. So let's look at let's look at let's look at where that is. Um, and maybe. Uh, um, that's like right there. Sorry, you guys, I keep pulling this all over. To see, I wish there was a better way to. It's up just. Oh, am I close? You're close. It's kind of. It's You're talking about right across the street from me. Yeah. From the derelict property. Right, it's right, right here. There, th right here. It's, it's kind of right here. It's kind of a clump of everything. And there's like three trees in there yeah. that are right at that kind of size. Uh, I thought, I think to the left. Ash, I there think you go. I can tell you that they spend a buku bucks every year to to treat and preserve those their ash trees. Okay, yeah. And some of them are, one of them's an ash. They're all kind of clumped together right there. So we can come in front of that, I, you know, it was such a small little section. I was like, yeah. just keep it clean through there. So I'm glad you mentioned that one. Um, I guess if we can, but that one, I can see us moving around I, it. I remember him being at one of the meetings and, and said, just kind of come around this piece. What's got to happen, got to happen. It's a small little come around. You know, I in those cases, and maybe we need to state that, you know, this case, it might come, right along the curb, right? And it's gonna be right at the curb at this one point. Here's the curb. We're gonna bend it and it's gonna come along the curb. Now, Dan mentioned like when it's along the curb, we'll take care of it. When it's a short section like that, yeah. the public works department yeah. isn't gonna come out and take care of these small little, I just made a bump out. We're talking long sections here, yeah. right? Like a yeah. whole property link right. of section. But if, and I don't know if we have to state that somehow or, or, or mention that, but. And do you think that property owner would prefer us to try and go yeah, around? They yeah. would be very happy if we okay. to, we'll to ash. clean it up and take the ash down. Those ash are going to die, whether they're yeah. treating them. If they're treating them, and they, um, I mean, this is one in construction. I, I think some of these in construction will be like, okay, you know, Kathy, you're talking about the landowners, and like the next year when the trees fully, you know, leafed out and they're starting construction. We do kind of want to knock on the doors of the landowners for a couple of reasons, right? One is as construction is going on, we want them to move all of their landscaping, small stuff that they want out of the way. And typically, even though we give a lot of time, Kathy, that happens the week prior to us, the contractor getting there to do the work, then they start moving it likely. Um, so we're usually ahead of them. At the same time, I think we talk to people like this to say, hey, we're bumping this around these trees. Do you want to save this? Do you not want to save this? If somebody says, no, we really want to take this tree out, we'd have to come back to the village and say, well, it's in the right of way. Like, what do you guys think? Dan, what do you think is part of that? So we're not just taking trees out either. So I'd, I'd, be, go back and forth. I'd be cautious in meandering a sidewalk for an ash tree. Me too. We, yeah. we've, we've had in the city where people have paid for treatment and, and those trees have died. I, I'd hate to see us meander a sidewalk for an ash and it's in a year that tree's dead and down. Um, there's right, more than the there's more than just an ash in that. There's a right. Norway okay. and there's a, yeah, uh, there's two Norway maples. Okay, based on based maples. on your guys' GIS, there's two Norways. Yeah. Again, I'd like to put eyes on it sure. in the spring just to make sure we, you know, sometimes they are properly okay. right either in the GIS. So then, then those other trees should be fine. When you go around a tree, are, are these trees the shallow being roots? Being moved? Are you going to affect those trees anyway? Somewhat. We are going to impact them. So especially in a, I know, and especially in a place like this where it's really tight. It's going to be close. Uh, We're going to be right on top of these trees as we go around. Tim? Kathy, you want to go first? I think we're talking about the same moved? thing. Oh, sorry, Tim. No, I, go, I, you go. You go. I think we're talking about the same thing. I don't think this large one is. Um, you know, I think this is the maple. You can see the maple leaves on it, and it's probably just at that six-inch level. 
I mean, maybe you could get some big spade in to move these out. The other thing that, the other part I struggle on this a little bit of is there's power lines that go through here, right over the top of this clump. So, you know, what, you, you know what, if you look on the corridor, the power company comes through every X amount of years and you can tell they chop them. Just look at nickels. I mean, a, a great example of, of that would be, and while I, I, I'm, I definitely, don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to cut trees down. I'm thinking of it on, in that sense too, of those go right under that power line. A great example would be, I, I look at them all the time and I think, man, those they're such nice trees, but they had to like shear right down the center. Right. You guys probably see them. They're down here on this end when you come through and maybe I won't show it in this picture, but they're like, oh no, they're not on this, they're not on this one. Maybe they're further up. They, they go right through the center. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Does have some, yeah. right? So Josh, I wasn't suggesting that the city that the project be responsible for moving the trees, but th perhaps the people who live there, if they really cared enough, he he might want to move them if they were movable. Sure. Yeah, even if it cost a lot of money. Would he move them then as part of this? I, I'm just saying that um there's the maple. If you could it's, it's if, cool. if it's possible, I mean we can't save the trees, but he might be willing, he might be willing to move them if it was an option that was open to him. I don't know. But 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 I but I but I do know that he cares enough and has the resources that if he wanted to, he could do it. I just don't know if it's feasible. There's that maple on the other side kind of going into the lines too. Tim. Um, this brings me back actually, speaking of trees, um, I, I'm, I think I'm back a screen or two, uh, but um, the, the tree in front of Jim um, Drager's house. Um, it goes back. Uh, uh, gosh, I wish I, I, I'm not coming up with a street number here. Not great. What's the address? What's the address? I, I'm working on the address. I'm it's the one on. with the fancy one of a kind tree. Yeah, yes, I'm surprised we that didn't tree. talk about that one. Now that we're going to move, right? So that one we are showing, give me, give me, a, you guys have an address off the top of your head. Oh, it, it, it's the one that the mayor talked about that we talked about moving the tree yes. down. I got them. It's, it's a bigger than six says. inch tree, I believe. It's a, yeah, that, I would hate to okay. see that happen. So there's three trees in this, in James's yard there. We had a conversation with them with the mayor. Dan, you remember this a year or so, probably or two years ago now. He has three trees there. Two of them are very, fairly small on the bookends, but the one in the middle is large. See that hatched area? That whole hatched area is the tree. That's this is the this is the special tree um, that is. I, I I always call it a bush, but it's not a bush. It's just really low, right? It's it's low to the ground and it sprawls. He mentioned he can trim that back, and he thinks we can pluck that out of the ground and he can save that. Really, good for Jim. That's a gorgeous tree. And, and it I is, bet you that uh, was built when the house was. That was put in there when the house was built. So it is this. Which one? It's this one right here. Mm. This is it. It's a bush. I always say, but that's it. it looks like yeah, that that's that. That oh. wasn't that particular one. Wasn't put in when the house was built. That's much newer. Oh, is that this? much newer? <laughs> It's it's an ancient tree. It's so you know, tree. here's one that we would we could pluck. You know, we talked to him about that one. We could pluck out of the way. This is this is a tree of some sort. Um, it's a rare species that he wants to save. And then he has another small here and here that <laughs> again, so these are more decorative ornamental trees that he thinks we can pluck out of there and, and move somewhere else. So okay, I think so they are like, removable. He believed that those were removable. Um, he's quite the arborist, I think. Um, so yeah. I was relying on his thought that they could be removed. This one is very big. This picture is deceiving. I'm going to go back to the plan sheet. It really is this sprawling. Like it is, you know, it, it takes up an area. 
So I talked to him about that. Like he'd have to kind of cut it back so they can put their thing around and grab it. And he's like, yeah, I think we could save it though. I would have to trim it. Um, if, it if we can't do that in this area, the sidewalk along this lot would have to go right along the curb. And I still think we, again, have some impact to the roots, but they are fairly small trees. So I don't think they'd have, you know, really right. large. They're probably closer to the tree. So, tree so a follow-up question to that is, do we have money in this budget to add trees aside from our regular budget like we, for trees? Like we do on recent past projects, we wait till the project's done. We do it ourselves rather than go through the contract. And that's um, fine. We go right, right to our supplier versus a low bid supplier. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we like to come in when it's done, see where the open spaces are, and then fill them accordingly. But we, okay. we, we've been doing that the past probably four years now. Sure. Where we, where we come in after after the project's done on our own. So so in this particular area, which is full of massive oaks and mass, massive maples and such like that, I, I guess I'm not really seeing putting in decorative little dwarf thingies. You want it, I mean, the, the old joke is that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is tomorrow. Uh, and so we want, I, I, I see where we want to replace that with oaks and maples and things that will turn into the trees that are there now. So if I, I can just put in that plug. If, if there's power lines above it, the city ordinance, I believe, prohibits trees that will grow into the power lines. If there's no power lines above it, then the big trees can go in. Okay. So that, that, that's been a standard probably well before I got here. I'm not sure when that, that code changed, but it's been in there. I can see that. Thank you. Well, good catch. Can we move to the wall? Yeah. The wall is what we really want to talk about tonight. So for sure. Um, <laughs> and, and the wall actually, we've, we've got, so you get up to what would be Owen. Let me zoom in there a little bit. We get up to Owen. And at Owen, we start to bump out and move this entire curve on the east side. Um, there's a section, Dan, here. There's some really, this is where we finally get into some big oaks that we potentially are going to impact. Um, I'm going to go to the aerial to show you those. Until, until now, we don't impact, I think, an oak to this nature. But it, it, this is where we would have to stay along the back of the curb, the new curb, in order to avoid um, some of these trees. Two big oaks that are here. Here's one of them. And the other one's right here. So the sidewalk would stay, you know, the curb's going to come out and the sidewalk would be right behind it to avoid these ones that kind of overhang the, the roadway at the same time. So when I turn back, you can see them a little bit better. Bear with me. These kind of come and they hang over, you know, they're larger and they, they kind of provide that canopy that's coming over the road. Um, save those, we'd have to go right along the curb. We were anticipating doing that. That's what we're showing at this section. When we get to close to, to Mike's driveway. Now we've met with the property owners, both, why am I blaming <laughs> Dave, 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 yeah, Dave Whitty and, and, um, and Mike. We met with them both. And what we are going to do or what we're proposing is we are putting this, this, this wall basically right off the back of the right over. And we're gonna have to grade into their properties about five to six. They wanted some confirmation from Bill Cole. We reached out to Bill Cole as far as like their rights. And, and you know, as long as we're not purchasing, Bill said, if we're not purchasing new right away and it's just an easement to grade and then put back, we have the right to do that um, as part of this project and moving a curb and getting us all to fit with that wall there. They are fine with that moving forward. We might again, we met a couple times with them out there. We, we might see some stakes in their yards actually. We put some stakes out there and work with them through the holiday break um, on it. And 
At the same time, we're talking to the utility companies here. It's really tight for the utilities. And there's big oaks on either side of the tree on this, these north sections. They may underground the utility in this section because they're going to have to relocate for what we're doing. So if they underground, there also will be tree impact. Relocating at their cost? Yes. OK. Yeah. To, to be determined, but they're going to get an arborist too to look at, well, what are we really going to impact? And maybe it's more beneficial on the environment. Because they don't want to cut oaks either. They don't want to, and, yeah. and they don't want to go through the whole hassle of, yeah. of knocking this corridor out of either. Now, I haven't been, they haven't said, yes, that's what we're going to do, but I've told that it's going to be hard to fit power back through this section. It's hard. It's fit through there tough now, and they may underground a section of this. I'm hoping it's from Maywood. It's Owen to Maywood. Right. Um, because that would, that would really clean up the corridor. So what we're proposing, let me just jump back to the plan sheets here, is we're along the curb and then right before the driveway, we come out with a retaining wall. So around this corner, we're right up against the property line and the, the owners know that. We have a, a little wall that wraps around their driveway on the south, and then on the north side, it continues along Mike's property. Basically exactly where that exactly the same length, except for a little on this corner, because we need a wall, because it's steep right there. It's going to be put back roughly at the same length that it is now. And actually, it's going to be shorter. It gets to be three, three and a half feet. It's probably only going to be two and a half to three feet. And we are going to provide a terrace through there. So there is going to be a green space for Mike's leaves. There's going to be a green space of four feet. There's going to be a four foot walk and a wall right behind it. The wall's gonna be right up against the sidewalk. They'll put the wall in, they'll probably pour the sidewalk right up against it on the back side as a four. And then there'll be a four foot walk there. It's a little narrower of a walk. Um, when we were out with the property owners, Kathy was there, had been there for some meetings, um, just, just to kind of help us coordinate with them. And Mary's been out there, Brad was out there when you were gone. But what we agreed to is, instead of having a three foot terrace and a five foot walk, they wanted a little bit more space. We're talking about that terrace space, Kathy. They wanted more space for snow, for leaves, for garbage cans. And they, they would rather sacrifice the walk, which is okay. Four foot is still okay. It gives us a, a, a place. It's a I short think distance. It's, it's a short distance along the wall. I, I think it's the best anybody could hope for, honestly. We don't even touch the west side curve. It stays where it is. Everything stays as it is but we will be impacting back into these parcels about five to six, well, from where, the, from where the curb is now, about nine feet. They know that when you look at it and you go out there today, I mean, yes, they lose a lot of greenery, but it's all pretty short stuff because right above it's the power. So they know they're kind of, kind of lose some of that. We talked about putting an allowance in, we're gonna to have to purchase some temporary right away from these two parcels and the next lady to the, to the north. And in that temporary easement, they've asked that would, they, would public works and the council consider them having kind of a landscaping budget back that they can put some arborvitaes along the wall or something else because they have this, they have this green space they wanna have maybe some compensation to put some of that back in its place to provide that green screen. So they have they have wildflowers, a lot of wildflowers in that space. They do. So you would just list it as a, a line item in the, in the bid or, or an alternate. So that's how it would be approved. I haven't got back to them yet. I said, do you want us to plant something or do you want to plant something? I said the hard part is if you want us to plant something, we have to decide that now within the next few months, right? For the contractor or next month. Or do you just want to say, okay. They were, they're in the process of having a couple landscapers look at it and maybe just say, okay, it's, it's a couple thousand bucks. I'm just, I, I don't know that. I'm throwing out a number, right? So in our easement, when we purchase the, our easement from them, it's still temporary easement. They're usually practically nothing. Do we purchase it for two or $3,000? And in that purchase price, that gives them the money to then landscape it themselves after the project. They can take their time with it. They can potentially wait a year or two or plant a little at a time and do what they want. I think either writing it into the TLE or putting it as a, a as a line item in the bid yep. uh, for um, like a bid for an allowance uh, yep. for landscape. Uh, just an allowance. Either way, city council will approve it because yep. they're approving the TLE yep. or they're approving the bid. Sure. So, so I don't have that answer today. They were going to kind of think on it and stew on it a little bit more, but they are open to allowing this to kind of yep. 
how could it not kind of fight the temporary easement at this point? And, and those types of allowances are common. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big part of the project um, that we will be able to put a wall back. I thought we could use larger block walls, but because it's so short, we'll probably have a similar wall type that you have out here today. So it will be the smaller block wall. It won't be any taller than it is today because what we are proposing in that section, and I'm gonna just bear with me, I gotta jump to the end of these real quickly. It's on the terrace, on the terrace section, you can see this, this dashed line. That's The dashed line is what's out there today. Here's the curb today and the wall's right behind it. We're pushing the curb this way three feet. In the terrace, we're making that a one to five. So over, over, if you can envision it, if you go over five feet, it goes up one foot, that's 20%. It's not real bad, but we gain almost a foot right there on the terrace. Yeah. And that's perfect for storage. Yeah, it's, it's storage and it's not overly steep. You can mow yeah. that. It's, 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 it's still very, very practical. But well, we gain a foot there, then we have the sidewalk. And in this case, each one of these squares is six inches. So, you know, there's about a two foot wall is all that's needed. And then all of it's blended so we can basically match right back into where their property is. We're still gonna have to excavate and they know that four to six feet past to get this wall built. We try, we're gonna try to minimize that with the contractor as much as possible, but we would fill that area back in. So they may have an area back here where they have to landscape. This is where they're gonna have that area that's still impacted four to six feet that is going to be bare after they're done. After we're done, sorry. Do we have to do anything to um, build this driveway to change are. the grade? Um, and, oh, and, yeah. And it's going to have to go a ways back. It, it, is, it is doable. Um, we've talked to them. We've looked at the slopes out there. And this is the will cover No, that's well. the other one. I think it's up. Is this the south one? Yeah. Okay. Or, no, that's the north. Oh, yeah. One was like, oh, yeah, it's this one. So it's steep here now, and it's even steeper than 10%. We're gonna, we can, we have to flatten it here. You know, the sidewalk has to be flat. That's a tough spot, right? We can't right. have that tip that has to be ADA, not over 2%. So you keep that flat, and then we have to chase it. And we have to chase it a ways, ways back. Um, both, I talked to both of them about it. We kind of walk back and it starts to flatten at the top so we can catch it back there. Um, they understand. Actually, I he's going to argue because he's getting in the driveway. Actually, their driveway yeah. is in the best shape. You know, so when you get back there, I'm like kind of here and I, and I kind of was like, you know, this is all that new. And they're like, yeah, we're well, fine. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, they, they like the fact that they, right now they come down this hill. They come down their driveway and it's just straight down into the curb. And this is actually going to provide, you know, 10, or, you know, a safe zone. Zone. little bit of a safe flatter zone yeah. as they get to the end too, which they're a little bit excited about as, as part of this. What's and now they have a place for their trash cans. And what's 40%? I can't see. Uh, 10%. It's 10%. So. This is 10%. I think their they're current when we were out there is a little steeper than that today. Yeah, it was like 12%. Yeah. Did it want to go steeper than Um, We can. It's just, I always, I always, worry about the next person that may own the house that has one of those sports cars that are low riding <laughs> and 10 seems to be yeah. about where you want it before you start to rub undersides of, of low clearance vehicles so it's nice to just try to go in at 10 and then the field will try to feel a bit with them as best we can Tim you're on mute Part of this was also knowing that we're trying to work with them on the wall, so we we're trying to make this driveway. Tim, Tim your mic is on a little bit better than what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, am I understand that the, the flat spot here that says 1.50% is the sidewalk? One and a half. Yep, one and a yeah, half percent. Yeah. Okay. But you said those were six inch squares. That's only two feet wide. That's vertical adjustment oh, is vertical. six inches. Yeah. The horizontal is uh, one foot. One foot. Scale. Yep, the scale isn't right. The That's horizontal why. is one foot. Okay. So yeah. Very good. Thank you. This this way, yep, is one footers. This way is six six inches. It just exaggerates that section a little bit so you can see it, so it's not so flat. That's a good catch, though, man. Tim, you're on you're on top of your game today. It's <laughs> me. <laughs> 
Yeah, so yeah, we have to keep, you can't go over 2% for it to be ADA. Typically we show it at one and a half because the contractor can, if you show it at two, if they build it just a hair off, you're over two. So you want to show it just on your, and then so they can fit in that range for the, the building. So, I mean, that is really the big, the big discussion is we believe we have that solved. Um, we're going to work up some temporary easements. The property owners still have to decide on landscaping a little bit, Dan, but whether it's an allowance in the contract or it's allowance maybe yeah. through the easement documents, I think that's easy to figure out. Um, yep. I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, and have you considered other materials other than block? Because the block has a certain width to it. Um, I'm thinking like I've seen retaining walls made out of like vertical steel panels, like they use for retaining when they're doing, uh, you know, caisson work or, or bridge yeah. work or stuff like that. I mean, yeah. there you're talking two inches, three inches wide, and they'd just be driven down into the ground uh, right. with, with some kind of a cap. I mean, it's something that's thinner. Yeah, you know, make them in decorative. So the well, you can sometimes face them raw steel. You can sometimes face them too. So I was, we've kind of kicked this around a little bit, and I was thinking that also is I was thinking of the same thing you were is basically what he's talking about is they have large sheets and they're beveled, right? Mm -hmm. So they're beveled, kind of wavy, like a wave, and they would come with a machine and they vibrate them in, and then the next one slides into itself and vibrate it in. So we essentially, Tim, we wouldn't need an easement. We would put it right on the property line, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, right behind Take the, away the block and go straight down through that space right straight down through it um that can be very expensive uh, as far as per block wall and then i was worried about the look of it afterwards if you guys are okay with seeing a metal wall now that that wall typically then just rusts and it's supposed to rust and it has a rust color and it protects it actually and then or they can put they can weld little uh they can weld like little bolts on that stick out and they could, they could concrete face it. Um, I see. Sometimes that tends to break up over time and, and kind of fall apart. You're right in the fact, Tim, that they can put a concrete cap on the top of it. Um, we did that down or the river. Steel cap. Yeah, or a steel cap. Yep. Yeah. So that is an option. I, I know in the, state of, uh, in the state of Michigan, they, the bridges that they make now are with that weathering steel. Yeah. So that's all they use. They don't use concrete. They don't use concrete faced steel. Yeah. They use weathering steel. It's steel that's designed for that type of, of application. And it doesn't turn brown. red, it turns brown. Yeah, it turns like a brown, yep, like a brown kind of rusty. Yeah. It doesn't it's just turn something that's thinner, is what I'm saying. Yep. Kathy. I would hope that whatever we do complements the wall across the way and maintains the aesthetics. I mean, we're already changing things dramatically and people walk and go down Winnipeg because they like the aesthetics of it. So um, unless there's a practical reason to change it from the stone and what complements across the way, I would hope we would keep that into consideration. We can always put it as an alternative. Mm -hmm. But there may not be an appetite aesthetically. If, you know, that, that would be something we have to discuss with someone. Is it this committee that makes that call then or passes that? like what that wall looks like to council? Well, I believe probably when this when this committee and, and council made their decision, they assumed it'd be a similar type of yeah, I mean, we left it as a similar wall. Yeah. It, will, it will be similar block type. We can we can play with colors and we can look up it later as, as you decide that as they uh, after the fitting. I guess I'd prefer to see what to match what homeowners would probably prefer. And I venture to guess that they would prefer what they have now as opposed to something like steel. So maybe talk to the homeowners today. Kathy, you're muted. I'm talking, but you can't. Josh, what happens further down the road where we have the pillars? We pull them out and put them in your yard. 
Can you tell it's like in late or something now that you yep. get my answers? <laughs> I shouldn't say that because we're recording. I'm, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, here's the pillars, Kathy. Can you see those two little dots? I think this is what you're talking about. I'm going to go to it on Street View. I see the pillars. The pillars are what will go down the street. Bear with me. They're closer to Maywood. Right there. Yep. The house that Rob Call built. Yep. Those two bad boys, right? Yep. So those two pillars are just in the right of way. Um, here's the sidewalk. So we have. Okay. So we they're still all have, we, we still have those behind the sidewalk. And the limits of how we're grading that based on cross sections is right to the, you know, it's right to the back there. So our goal was not to touch those. Um, you can see we're going to hit the power pole there, but that's where, again, this power pole talk from Owen all the way up to Maywood is going to be something that, that uh, MGE is going to have to figure out and we're going to have to work with them on. We're going around a tree over here. There is another really big oak tree um, on, on this property too, a handful of them actually, where we do have to get up against the sidewalk again. This is going to be a really tough one to save. We were talking about hitting roots before and getting, yeah. putting a little bit of, you know, a little bit of stress on it. This one's close, but it's it's another big one, right? There's it, no room to go behind it. Huh? There's no real room with that wall there, Dan. And then there's that's right away too. We kind of sneak back in right away, actually. So we're going in front of this, and I think that's going to be a really tough one. Now remember, the curve's moving three feet, so we it, it, it it's better than it looks here. Right. And we're we're you know we're passing within. Let's go back to that. Can you do four foot around that tree? We could, yeah, yeah. So this tree, that's the face of the tree, remember, too. So it's probably two feet away from that tree. But if you're moving the curb three feet, yeah. And if you shrink the sidewalk to four feet, yeah, we give ourselves, you give yourself room on the roots. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is kind of one of those, uh, there's, we've, we've talked about it during construction where the contractor comes and starts excavating. They say, okay, let's be careful. Let's see what you right. can excavate around the tree without ripping the big right. the big roots that are coming out and spread now. They do a little of that and then we make a call. Okay, well actually, just looks like we can fit five here, or maybe we only fit four, and that's right. how they, they form it up. Yeah. So we let homeowners know that this is risk. We we have talked about there's gonna be impact. I think we mentioned that the whole time. Yeah, on we're tree going roots. On that, that it will stress the trees. If there is a tree in really poor health, that would likely probably kill a tree. Otherwise, I mean, you're gonna stress it for a little while and hopefully it just kind of bounces back. But the fact that you're moving the curb three feet. Yes. And if you do a four foot sidewalk, that way you only impact it, I mean, you impact it minimally. Minimal, than where the curb was yeah. at before. So you're right, Dan, that could be, we could switch that at least to show that here and yeah. then just kind of feel fit it as part of that. Is all I know is, is what, like Kathy said, Rob calls house. It doesn't have the address on it. It's right next to the address. Otherwise, from there, from, from this point forward, we come at Maywood. We've never really talked about the Maywood intersection at a lot of these meetings, but what we're proposing, I guess, is to kind of tear out this island so that we can put a crosswalk through the island. You know, it, it kind of has a, it's wide enough to even have a storage kind of space in there. So they would cross through the island and then and then be on the other side. And we're taking the sidewalk to the, to just to the park. So it's just going up around the bend and tying in at basically the park driveway. And we're ending it there for now. Is there any chance I mean, there that, is. that we could put a roundabout at that? End? Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I support it. I know. It would have to be a minute. It would have to be a minute. I know. I know. 
so that I'm not I'm made with the, the sidewalk is just turning making the curve. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it's just making yeah. the curve along the it's, yep, it's just and it's maintaining the five and five. There's one space there. Um that has so I think the spruce tree, we show that on there. There is a smaller this. This, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to go through what's kind of just lower, lower kind of brush in there. And then I think you get to be a park at one point, but this spruce is also going away unless we come in front of it. The hard part with saving a pine is it just keeps growing into the sidewalk. So even if I go in front of it, it's gonna get me at some point. That's right. why that's what that's the hard part about saving the pines. But this is where where if it comes out, we can replace it with something yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. So I did I did show this as just staying five and five and going through that tree because if we stay in front of it, here's yeah. from now we're gonna, gonna end up cover either trimming the bottom all off or, or cutting it there. We, we can add something that, that's gonna be probably more of a less approachable kind of tree, but a screening type of tree. And there, there's things that we can do there. And then we just there's a general question. So I'm just ending it right basically, you know, when we get to pavement limits um, there. I didn't know if anybody wanted anything else. It's just going to kind of butt into the pavement. Yeah. Okay. Can you go to the west? Can you turn it Can you add probably a panel where that crosswalk is? Do you want to? Do you want to? Should we? Should we send? Yeah, yeah. Should we send the sidewalk across here? And, yeah. Yes. And like formally, just fix the apron. Yeah. And yes. Get an apron there then. Yeah. Well, and and not to, I mean, any any chance at all that we could add a speed hump at that crosswalk? And I say this because people come flying down that hill, and yeah. it's a stop sign. Right. So say it's pretty close. And to it's also a crosswalk for the park. And I don't know, I just, if I think of a lot of places where you want to slow people down going in the other direction, that would be one of them. So I, you might have, might be able to do it here. You have very little room here to do it there. Oh, God. But probably on this side of the intersection. You could do it right there. Yeah. You know, uh, so Chad, I had thought about I'll the same wrong. thing, but I thought the stop sign would do a similar, similar oh. thing where they're starting to slow down in anticipation of the stop sign. You know, today, today, currently, you're saying, Tim? What? What's that? That may wait. I think when people come to that point, they start to slow down for the stop sign. Except for the bikers. Well, yeah. Yeah, the bikers are probably on the lake loop. They have nothing to stop for. So, yeah. you know, they're staying in their lane. Nobody's going to turn in front of them. Could we, could we go back to Maywood Road for a second? Yep. The, the plan, Tim, or, or on the aerial? Uh, either one, either one. Okay. Um, one of the things that we heard from the, uh, the, the neighborhood is that if they're coming down the sidewalk uh, and they come to, and, and they want to go to Winnipeg Park, okay? Um, we had talked about doing the possibility of a sidewalk going up all the way up Winnipeg, Pashluter, down the hill, and we decided, or the comment was that that involves retaining walls, blah, 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 all of that, that stuff. Okay, and I can see where that's really expensive and maybe that's for another project. But what, what I'm, we're looking at here, it, uh, so the comment came up is to get to Winnipeg Park and to stay off the street, what you would do is you would go down Maywood and then pick up the sidewalks on, on, uh, on Dean. Dean? No, Nichols. Nichols, sorry. And, and make a make a left there, go up the hill, and then you're in Winnipeg Park. So, what now? What we've got here now is a sidewalk that brings us to Maywood. Is there a way that we can do a slip of this sidewalk that goes up to Kelly Place, and then we dump them out onto the street? And that's outside the project limits. This this committee and city council didn't approve that. Well, um, and there's no action. Everything that we've talked about so far is, is we, we can do because these are minor adjustments. That's going outside the project zone. That would have to come back to this committee as an actionable item and then go to city council as an actionable item. Um, 
because you're outside the project zone. It's not something city council approved or this committee approved. So but that's the second you're saying that's not impossible. Well, there is that sidewalk there on the curve that's there is on the other that. side, but, but it's not the side that you should let's see. Is that the side you should be walking on? Yeah, that is the side you should be walking on, right? Yeah. There's no sidewalks up maybe. No, there isn't. But I mean, if the, you, the bike to, uh, yeah, to back you up. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, just to your point there, Chad, is yes. So correctly, they should walk over to the to the stop sign that we're looking at right now and then they should follow this kind of apron-y thing that i guess is there because of trucks turning may, maybe making a right i'm not sure why it's there uh, and then they're on the correct side of the street so okay forget what i just said but tim you are correct that uh based on the pedestrian and bicycle master plan that that was uh much debated and then approved, Maywood is one of the pedestrian corridors mm -hmm. long term that the city would like to see uh, a sidewalk on. So yeah, this this is not this is yeah. pretty easy, and it would yeah. be on that side of the street. Yeah, because it's yeah. it's very okay. flat and easy. to so, you know, not the great issues here. If I could, you know, Tim, that'd be something to bring up going into the capital budget for twenty three. If this committee wants to bring it up as a standalone project to add sidewalks on Maywood, that that be and to, and, and to bring it up on that side of the street, yeah, bring the sidewalks on that side of the street. Were were we talking about only doing only looking at sidewalks when we're looking at redoing the street? Right. Well, right. But so this, does Maywood need to be redone? No, no. But this, I mean, if it's the desire of this committee to do that, sure. We, we can add it to the capital budget unless the council decide. Mm -hmm. um, I think what was talked about is if if we are reconstructing the street, um, we also look at doing sidewalks at that time. But there's nothing that says we can't do it outside of a project. OK, we um, got the money. But we, we can, if this committee wants to add it as a project, we can easily get an estimate and prepare it for the 23 capital budget. I mean, well, at this point in time, I'm just happy with the fact now that I got my direction straight uh, to to that people should officially properly walk to that side of the street, and then they ha they now have a, a a concrete space to bring them north of the the intersection, and then they can be dumped out onto when it, uh, onto Maywood Road. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I, I agree with Kim and, and more actually for kids who might want to walk to Winnipeg, but I would point out to all as a practical reality, I think we're done with sidewalks for a while because I think there is um, strong interest on the part of the council and the mayor to build a public safety building and we are, we are pushing um, our borrowing limits. So I, the thought of getting another sidewalk put in the budget next year, I think is not likely. Just, I, I don't want people to get up hopes that that there will be more of the same next year because I don't think it's, I don't think it's a reality. Okay. But we can always ask. We can ask, but I can tell you. All right, is that it, Josh? That is sort of it. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> One more question. If we go yeah. back to Morgara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we kind of skipped over some of these last ones. Morgara yeah. is right here. There's um, 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 across the street from Morgara. Let's see. There's a couple of trees there that are that I'm wondering about. Um, uh, and they're kind of right on the edge. So I'm talking about the west side of Mygara. Uh, remove a, a 16 inch hickory. Uh, it's outside of that construction zone you were talking about. And remove a 30 inch white oak. Uh, that's outside of the construction zone you're talking about. Is that more concerned about the roots or? Yeah. Or is that, is that related to if we were moving that 
Or if we remove the curb closer to the wall? Yeah, that so was that, before. So that might oh, be part of that, part of that, uh, those might be able to come off of there now. Yeah. So this is okay. Good. That's good news. Okay. Um, so, you know, so we, really we have all one the trees, right, all, right all the trees on the, the west side are fine. Yeah, they should oh, be. We're doing the curb there. Yeah, the there's there's the curves out. here, right? Just where the bump outs are. Yeah, there's that. But they should be able to delicately work around the street, don't you think? That might be some of it. There. There's, there's no bump out at that particular intersection or that yard. Yeah, it's that right, yeah, there, it's right here. That piece there. Yeah, yeah, further down. So those would need to come out strictly in the process of taking out the bump outs. Well, we're going to be able to take this one out from the curb back, so we shouldn't we shouldn't have to. We this was I think when the wall was. Moving. Yeah. I think we can take. Uh, I think I'm going okay. to be able to take those two back off. Okay. And we had also Not talked about missing, that's that hickory. This is a thirty. Yeah, that was when we were moving this this whole section. Yeah. Okay. Did you see another one of those? Uh and the other question I had was going back to like Mike Mike Mealman's corner there. Yep. Uh, next one over. There, there was a 12 inch tree in the yard that seemed to be, I'm not sure why that was projected. Remove 12 inch hickory tree. Yeah, there's two of them here. There's like a 12 inch and then there's like kind of one on the six inch or smaller. And I talked to him about these. The hard part is if we put this wall here, depending on you know the wall type, I'll talk to those guys about this. Um, we'd probably have to excavate and undermine that tree as we're excavating that out. You know, we're digging gotcha. along this wall and, and, and have a cut. And he, he understood that that one might have to go. Um, he was okay with that. That one was on his private property. Right. And it, 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 it was kind of a one, a unique one where it was actually kind of hanging out into kind of the power lines anyways. And, and he's like, yeah, I'm okay. I understand that I'm gonna lose one of these. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it here, but, um, right. It is right behind this clump of mass that. Yeah, but if but if they underground those things like you're talking about, fingers crossed, uh, then that should be okay. Well, no, it's part of just excavating this wall too. So okay. we'll try to save it. Some of these is we're going to try to save them, but I don't want to overpromise. Gotcha, gotcha. So this is okay. one where Mike and I talked about it, and I said, Mike, let's try to see what we do when we dig this out. He'll see us doing it. I said there's a good chance that one might have to come out or as they're digging this wall, a few feet back for this wall, we might be undermining it enough where it starts to just jeopardize the tree overall. And he was like, I get it. Let's do our best. If it goes, it goes. So there's a handful of these that we might not have to take out, but I don't want to overpromise some of the residents in part of it, you know? So Tim, we're going to try our best. That, that's fair enough. Thank you very much. And we decided that at each one of these intersections, there will be crosswalks on both sides, painted crosswalks on both sides. Yes. yes. Okay. Some of these things are small enough that I that I might. Are these also in the council's packets already? Well, what I was going to ask you, I you. <laughs> if you can take tomorrow to make all these changes and email me I, Friday. I think some of the stuff's small enough where. We could tweak some of the bump yeah. outs and the crosswalks to just represent what this. I would like to, as, as, to as best as possible, yep. incorporate these changes tonight yep. into what council is going to look at tomorrow. Um, Friday morning, if you you could get it to me, I believe yeah. she's not going to have her packet ready till good day Friday. So you're looking first, at you're looking at the wrong. So yeah. first thing Friday morning, yep. you know, I'll, I'll see if she can hold off on her packet. Mm -hmm. But it, it would be great if council could think. see what was. Most of this is. It's pretty quick. Yeah, this is, yeah. This yeah. is you know, it's just line work at this point. We can figure out some yep. of the details behind it yeah. after the fact, but if we just show what, right. what we want to represent, I think it'd be better for the council to say, hey, this is the conversation <laughs> that we had. Here's kind of where we landed. And then if they have stuff to talk besides that, we can go through why we chose what we did. Right. I think you I think you would just present what's on the sheet at that yep. point rather than yep. tell them what all the changes were. Just, yep. just present yep. what's there. Yep. Just this is this yeah. is what we came to as a consensus. Kathy? Yeah, I, I just I learned something interesting, which it may have occurred to all of you, but didn't to me when I was talking to people about the wall construction. When the, when the walls were originally put up, there wasn't curb. And if you know, the, the 
property behind the walls is lower than the street. And they used to have flooding. And, and one of the purposes of the walls was to prevent water from the street going down into the property and into the houses. So. Yeah, so they the, have a practical the west function. side. The west side walls, right, is what you're talking about? Yep, yep, yep. The decorative walls, the historic walls. It's a block of water because all those properties fell into it. Actually, I'm sorry to be so have so many questions tonight, but uh, how does how does the stormwater work in this area? Does it all go out like towards Bridge Road? Yes, there's there's uh, different culverts and, that head out. And, Graham, and Maywood, there's a big interceptor there. Yeah. And um, Graham, there's one. Yeah. So and that's Graham. coming down the hill in Maywood Park. But there's a stormwater outflow at by Frost Woods. Is yeah, there's one there too. The one there too. You could see if you if there's you do one down at Graham, I believe. Yeah. Yep. So like we're moving an inlet here, it's black, but in shaded, there's these lines, and it shows where that storm sewer then travels to the next manhole. So you could see some of that on the drawings, but yeah, it, it goes to Maywood or it goes to Graham. Um, so there's one by Frostwoods. There is one. There's, there's one, one at Frostwoods. There's ones at Frostwoods yeah. too. Um, so it kind of links up at different points yeah. and then outlets through your public properties. Yep. Except for the one by Maywood, that's through a private, that's an easement through a private parcel. Yep. Yep. Didn't we put in a big uh, big one near May that Maywood intersection? Uh, we did that Graham. Uh, like it west of Squaw. Right. Yeah, um, and we did it at Graham. Yeah. Right. We we do have one at Maywood that's we're gonna address all that stormwater that's stuff that's uh, in our in our near future. That's uh, gonna be a, a big one. We put a big collector in there for debris, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a, a, a concrete chamber there. Yeah. Um, I remember putting it in about yeah. five or six years ago. Uh, it was longer than that. It was there before I got here. Um, but it, it it's it's for larger stuff, it's not for sediment. Um, that more likely will probably be replaced when we do the next uh, the next phase of stormwater. Yeah. So we need a motion to approve this? No. Okay. No, right. these, these are all minor changes. Okay. No, there's no consideration on our agenda. No, That's why we got a little sketchy behavior. Okay. Just a working meeting to try to control what we have to do with the council. Item seven, Public Works Utility and Operations. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we we have we have that um, on February twenty third, the Public Safety Committee has their meeting, and they're having a traffic safety listening session. The meeting starts at six. They'd like that to be a joint session uh, for those who can log in uh, as members of the Public Works Committee by Zoom. Um, uh, it's a traffic safety listening session. They're, they want to talk about accidents uh, in the Monona uh, uh, limits. Um, it's, it's something that PD is, is heading up, but given that we're part of, you know, the Public Works Committee is, is part of signage and configuration of roads and things like that, speed limits. Um, if you can attend uh, for that discussion, that'd be great. I mentioned that in my memo to you. Um, about a week prior, the, the police chief will pass information on to me and then I'll email it to everybody. Um, thank you. So you have something to refer to um, if you can log in and, and sit in on that agenda item. Kathy, are you, you're, you're part of public safety, aren't you? I am, I chair. It's, it's, the yep. Dane, it's a Dane County report. Right. And, and they have a new system where you can do tracking and do stuff that ultimately citizens can keep better track of this, but, but it is the county that is coming out and going to the communities to present the findings from the Dane County report. So we'll be listening as well as people right. from public works. So 
Um, if you can make that, that would be great. Otherwise, I don't have any additions to the report. I move, it. I move adjournment. I'll second that. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Aye. Welcome, Thank Dave. You. Welcome, Dave. Aren't you glad, Dave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dave, we promise all these meetings don't last this long. No, um, no some are longer. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been at ones to one in the say, morning. This could be a short meeting by some standard recently. Oh, really? All right. Good night. Thank you all. Uh, I mean, you, you good night. Oh, yeah. public hearings with like 30 people.